are ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is the truth. You said we would know it. We wouldn't know about it. We would know it, and it would set us at liberty. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, we've been set at liberty, and some of us are going through the process. Some are beginning it. Some are to the tail end. Some are maintaining it, fighting the good fight of faith. But, Lord, I pray everybody would be built up according to their needs and blessed today, Lord, and so we can go out and be a blessing and help others in their needs and trials for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, I like to, I'll do some questions first. Uh, I don't like to do questions after I teach because we want to have a altar call. I like to just roll right into it. I might pass and say I'm going to cover it, but sometimes we need, we need some answers. Um, when I got into this with Mike, uh, he had been at it for a couple years, but you, you can't learn it all in that short amount of time. So he learned a lot. And um, one of the things that, the main thing we all learn is this thing takes a while. It takes a while. Well, why does it take a while? Well, it's your heart, uh, it's your motivations, it's your ability to discern good from evil, and then it's your fight. And so certain things, I do believe that God is so merciful, he'll take out some demons the powerhouse ones. Otherwise, the person wouldn't make it. But most people are taken out like a, like a, like a war. You, you're, you're, you're fighting a battle of foot soldiers. You're taking out then some, some regional managers. Then you get to the general. So I want to talk about three levels of deliverance. There are three levels of deliverance, and it isn't just YouTube would give you, if you just are a viewer of YouTube, that like, hey, okay, we're going to take the authority. We're going to repent. We're going to start barking at these demons, and they're all going to come out. That's what it seems like if you watch it. But if you've been into it for 12 years, like me, and and 16, 14 years like Mike, it's a process. And so there's deliverance from yourself. There's there's 20% of the people that don't get much deliverance because they won't die to themselves. So they're running by their own fleshly desires, their own wants, their own will. Well, that's the basics of Christianity. You have to die to yourself. You have to be a new creature in Christ. He does on the inside what only God can do. We can do behavior modification. The Old Testament, the law was behavior modification. And if you didn't modify your behavior, you got stoned with rocks. But now God is doing work in the heart. And he'll judge you on the secrets of the heart. So it's nobody else knows what you're doing because they're not in there. But God knows obviously all things so there's deliverance from the old man then there's deliverance from the new man now he's pressing on he's fulfilling his call he's now helping people he's learning to be pliable it's not oh it's not all about yourself that's done that's the first level of deliverance now it's about the lord now you see what's in there then oh the final deliverance is the controller spirit there's one that set this whole thing up if, if, if Satan mimicked everything being outside of time and space with God, so that's immeasurable how long he was with God. At one point, we know he was created and we know that God always was. So there was a point of his creation, but it was outside. It's, it's, he knew everything about God. Well, God is perfect. So he's going to mimic the kingdom of darkness, just like the kingdom of God ran successfully. Well, the Bible talks about having a, a guardian angel. That God would send the angels to do so much, you're walking along, to pick you up so you don't stub your toe. So these devils are working with one that's in control. Most people do not have that spirit gone. They don't. Most deliverance ministers do not have that spirit gone, in my opinion. And uh, you're not going to be able to get rid of him. If you let negative thoughts, you know how hard it is? You know, you know how long the process is to not allow negative thoughts to come into your mind? Lustful thoughts, sinful thoughts. You, 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 well, it is every day, every second of the day. You, you, you have to whittle it down, right? But when you get them out, then the thought is coming from the outside in. When they're inside, they're working from within. And when they're working from within, they can press all the buttons. This, this, this flesh has all kinds of desires. Well, it's, you don't have to figure out you have a sexual character. You just need to hit puberty. 
and you realize you got a sexual character and it it changes your life. Uh, I was a class clown until I realized sexual character. And I said, well, I don't want these girls to see me in a negative light. And my, well, everything changed, right? Well, because the flesh, hey, I, you realize that protein builds muscles. You realize lifting weights makes them grow. Well, you, the flesh does all these things on its own. Well, the flesh, Paul said, nothing in it good dwells. So you got to, you got to, crucify it you got to then get the spirits out otherwise they'll press the buttons in there you were fondled when you were five he'll press a button in there and you can feel the fondler the tear the breath of the man here i heard hundreds of stories of rapes and molestations they can smell the person's cologne why because he's in the brain he comes out of the body you can still remember what happened but it's a distant memory it's it's a passing memory it'll never go away but it doesn't have the impact drugs hey when i smoke marijuana i said oh you can't do this drug and that drug boy you can't do steroids man you'll have no hair i think was i said there's behavior modification but i still smoke marijuana i didn't see what was behind the veil that the spirits enter through marijuana Oh, and they make you spiritually lazy and deceived. They will fast track the plan of Satan. So you have to realize that anything you're doing that's sinful into your flesh, you, you, you are fast tracking your destruction. You are fast tracking. Once you know the truth and you go back to sin, man, it steamrolls. It's like literally going to the elevator, the elevator's on the floor above you and you walk out down the elevator shaft Whew. so you need to take sin seriously and the bible i'll show you the verses show you that you got to take it seriously so you need to fight this controller spirit by the thoughts so god's thoughts that's the renewing of the mind god's thoughts become your thoughts his thoughts Hey, you whittle him down. You stop feeding him. Any sin that the devil gets you to do, he grows. He gets strength. He gets position off what you give him. You feed a lion raw meat, he's, he can tear up a city. You feed a lion nothing, and man, you can capture him with your bare hands in this point of weakness and skin him and take the pelt, right? But it's the way spirits are. You can get rid of some of them when you whittle them down. But if you're feeding them, you'll never get, you'll never get rid of them. You're fighting a losing battle. That way. Well, yeah, because he's designed to steal, kill, and destroy, and he's already on the inside, so he's tearing up from the inside. It's still hard. It's still a battle once you get him on the outside, but it becomes a lot more easier because you're not feeling the instant anger. You're not feeling the instant depression. You're not feeling the instant anxiety, the fear. Oh, no, I need money. Oh, no, no one cares about me. Oh, no, my ministry's not going anywhere. It's been five years. No. You can use your mind and you can make adjustments and you can make a pursuit and, and follow the direction of the Holy Spirit much easier. So deliverance is a part of the process. So saying that, open it up to a few questions so that we can cover it as we go. Some of Anybody got any questions? You've been in deliverance? You're trying to... You said something that was interesting. You said that Satan was designed to kill, steal, destroy. Well, it wasn't his original design. That's how he chose to operate. He could have, the Bible doesn't say other than why he was kicked out of heaven. But if you read the story, it's, it seems most people instant conclusion is, hey, this iniquity was brewing in Satan's heart. Now he finds out God's going to make somebody above him. He was God's ultimate creation. He had all this beauty and splendor. He was leading all these angels in worship. And all of a sudden, now God's going to make a creation in his image that's above the angels and now the angels were going to go and take care of us well he gets hey that's when it manifested and then it says he was cast from heaven to earth so god was creating the earth right for humanity i mean that's and so he now comes as the adversary so i believe the accusation and and the deal otherwise he would have went from heaven right to hell the lake of fire it would have been done but he says hey look you're, you're you're creating these people and you judged us all and you're sending all these me and my third of my angels to the lake of fire hey i'll tell you what well we know his plan he said he reveals it in the book of job hey i'll tell you what you take away a hedge of protection you let me go to and fro this earth i'll devour all their souls 
I'll take them all to hell with me. They'll all turn their back on you. So we see that he gets the legal right. Okay, we got two people that are able to sin without any demons inside of them, Adam and Eve. So if you think deliverance is going to keep you from being able to sin, you're delusional. (laughs) You, You got free will to the day you die. And they chose to rebel. Hey, the the voice was very cunning. Satan was very cunning. Hey, I I don't talk to animals other than stop that. Come here. You know, I I chat. I I yell command. My daughter talks to animals. So this devil's so smart. He, He figured out, hey, these women are completely different than men. Hey, man was made in the image of God. Women want to be nurtured and love and and have affection. Men just looking to divide, you know, conquer and build. And and so he said, I'm going for her. I'm going for her. That's where I'm going to go. Let's start talking the most beautiful, cunning beast of the field. And he begins to do what he does. He exposed the book of Joe or Genesis exposing its doubt. Did God really say, hey, first, have you considered it? He gets you to look at something, right? If it appeals to your eyes, there's three things that are common to man, the lust of his eyes, the lust of his flesh, the pride of his life. And so he knew he was going to appeal to the eyes. And did God really say, surely you won't die? And what's the longing that Satan had? He wanted to be God. So he's going to use every sinful thing as he's the originator of lies and sin. He he developed it all. He's going to implement that on humanity. You know what? You're going to be like God. And that's why we have all these cults that in new age that you can be God. God is within you. You got to find the Christ consciousness. Jesus Christ was, you know, uh, he, he discovered himself. Right. And now you have to go on this journey. You know, that, that's the original lie that man can be God. Right. And so he chose to do the exact opposite of what he was created for. He was created to worship and serve God and enjoy his presence for all eternity outside of time and space. So there was no end to it. So he came and developed himself under how the kingdom of God is ran. It's very orderly and precise. So Satan runs things with precision. Most people, when they're thinking about demons, Think that there's something conjured up by some rock dude that was listening to too much Black Sabbath. You know, and Marilyn Manson ripping out a couple, something was just evil moving around, you know, and don't get that. You'll feel evil. It'll make you, you know, do drugs. No, this, these things are very precise and smart and intelligent by the ability that not only do they lead humanity astray, but they lead Christians astray. And then when you know it's them, they still get them. That's how powerful they are. So we obviously know that we have superior power to demonic power in Luke 10, 19. And most people get confused. It's, it's power. It says the tread over the snakes and the, and the scorpions. It's not running around stomping on them. It says the tread on them. That means you're going where God called you to go. He's in your way since you are operating with superior power. He, 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 if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he exalts you. So I'm traveling high. So he gets my footprints. That's why I, I cringe when all these ministers, you, I don't want to say how they say derogatory things to the devil because you know who they are. But they do a lot of negative chanting to the devil. Uh, That's completely unnecessary because what you're a human being, you're going to have a bad day and you're going to have a bad thought. And uh, there's no sense poking the bear. He ain't playing. Uh, We're under mercy. We're under grace. I don't rise up. uh, Well, I'm this demon guy and I I conquered that. Now I'm a recipient of mercy and grace and I'm being transformed. I'm being renewed day by day and it doesn't stop to the day I die because God is infinite without limits and I am a limited creation. And so I'm going to stay under the mighty hand of God and I'm going to do what he says to do. So when he's in my way, he'll get the boot prints. But if someone's oppressed, I'm going to expose him. And I'm going to show them how to be free. I don't have any fear, but I don't need to be telling rotten devil, um, rubbing something in his eye. Look, he's already defeated. He knows he's defeated. He's he's not delusional. He just has this 
incredible God-given ability, but the God-given ability that his worship would never die. He was going to lead all God's angels in worship for eternity. Now he's chose to turn it and activate it to he will never quit and he will never die. His passion trying to steal, kill, and destroy human beings because we're in the image of God, made in the image of God. We're what God loves the most above all his creation. And he can't get up there and touch God. He was kicked out of heaven by his pinky. Boom, you're done. And it's fast like a bolt of lightning. So the only pain he can cause the Lord is inflicting all these things that he does. We're about to go through upon his children. From the eschatological uh, standpoint. Oh, that word's too big. We're going to have to go to the next question. <laughs> okay, try it again. <laughs> So the, the Bible, you touched on something that was really great. Uh, the Bible says that he knew his time was short and he was cast out of heaven, cast down. And he was full of wrath. That's what the Bible says. During that time period, if it is now, do we expect more demonic stuff to happen? Is it something else? What well, in, in my opinion, I think it's being released, right? I, I don't, there's never been a phenomenon with people that want to be a different gender. And, and it was, I was looking on Facebook and it led me to, I can't believe all the Hollywood people, people that were athletes, people that were actors, people that are now in the most popular YouTube. There's so many people transitioning. I never knew it. And I can't believe the ability that they can make you. I mean, I'm thinking this next generation, you're going to have to meet a girl and say, hey, forget the STD test. I want to do a DNA test. I mean, this, you, this is the age of confusion. So this was never what this was never a phenomenon. We didn't we didn't have the abilities. Well, they didn't have the hormones to make it look real. Yeah, they didn't look real. You knew what you were doing. Oh, yeah. But I'm just saying it's being released at a greater level, right? If a demon gets a meal, he grows and now he's he's feasting on flesh, right? In, in, in the he's a serpent in the garden. He's a dragon in the end. He's he's growing, right? So this stuff is being released like you can't believe. And leads me to one of my questions. I want to ask you too. Since some of these, like Jonathan Kahn's book, you know, Return of the Gods. I don't know if you guys have all read it. It's a pretty amazing book. But he talks a lot about the spirit of Ishtar doing all the trans stuff and Baal because these are ancient ancient false gods from the Bible. So, but if they're principality gods, should we be like trying to cast those off people or just try and get the, the, the demons that are underneath them? That are okay, them? see, see, it says you fight a battle not of flesh and blood, but of principalities and powers. Those things are up here. Those are the fallen angels. I don't believe when we're casting out, you got a fallen angel, eight million of them coughing out in your head. <laughs> I just can't. They, they got too much power. Some ministers will tell you that. I wouldn't argue with them. I'll stick to the plan of just getting them out. But these things are running the show, right? These things, and then it's the rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly realm. So it says you're against these things, against principalities, against power. They're separate against the rulers of darkness, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly realms. And then demons are different. Those are, those are disembodied spirits that need to be in a human body. Those are the worker bees. They go into operation. That's why Jesus cast them out. They said, hey, don't send us into another region or the abyss before the time. Let us go into those pigs. They need a body. Fallen angels have bodies. Okay. They've lost their glory, but they have bodies. And so these things are running things. They're, they, they've set up porn. Some, some dude just with the entrepreneurial spirit just didn't say, hey, I'm going to cross the line and really go dirty. And then one day, every woman in the recession is going to have a porn account called OnlyFans. That, that wasn't a man's idea. That was a principality's idea. But he has to grow incrementally. When I was in high school, I remember someone threw in a VHS porn tape at graduation, and the, it was like a cockroach in Phoenix. They don't have cockroaches in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Big ones, maybe in the sewer. You, you turn to Phoenix, I was like, whoa, look at these roaches that lived in this neighborhood. It's bad. You can't leave out nothing. So you turned on that tape, and whoo, the women scattered like you couldn't believe. Yeah. And dudes were like, dude, I don't think that was the best idea there. <laughs> Why? Because it was, it was, it was in there nature not to be carnal the men are different they're loving and nurturing that's why 
uh, women can marry men that are not handsome and not physically uh, gifted because they, they can reach the heart. Men have a hard time crossing that. Amen. You know, they can later in time, their second and third and fourth try, but it's, their <laughs> species are different, right? And so uh, he set up that thing and now he's brought women down to completely carnal now. The largest demographic of porn watchers now are women. And it's, and it's wickedness. It's very wicked, the stuff's on there. I mean, I, you just look at the titles of, of what the most common searches. It's, it's incest. That's one of the top three. Oh, it's, it's, I don't even want to mention it, but it's very wicked now. It's, it's not romance on, on uh, uh, Dynasty and, and, and Dallas, right? It's, it's now manipulation it's wickedness it's complete hey you came to this side this is the way it rolls lesbianism most women watch lesbian porn uh very dangerous a homosexual spirit and men don't understand why they're homosexual right. well you watch lesbians and you got gave place to the devil through taking gratification through homosexual uh, acts that homosexual comes in he can't make you a lesbian you're a man so you become a lover of men what those spirits do when they come down, they bring what they are. Spirit was cast out that was deaf, boy could hear. Spirit cast out that was dumb, boy could speak. Woman received deliverance from, from a spirit of infirmity, she raises up. So they bring what they are. So these spirits up here, that's where there's a division between a lot of deliverance ministers. And to me and Kelly will tell you, and Mike, you get around people that go around and they want to have Saturday binding devils in the heavenly, all of them got major problems. <laughs> or they got an off the hook gift and nobody comes to hear it because what's happening they're inviting friction that's unnecessary you tread on him he says like a snake and a scorpion when he's in your way so when you start doing all that you're causing yourself unnecessary beef because one day your flesh is going to pop up and one day you're going to find there's something in you you thought was long dead and gone that's the continual process of deliverance it's just you haven't ran into that yet. And the devil will start offering you the world. So, no, that's not going to work. If you could do that, man, all the Christians that do deliverance would get together. We'd bind porn. And then all of a sudden, every deliverance ministry would be filled with all these men that want to be delivered and women that want to be delivered from porn. But it never happens, right? It's an individual decision. It's an individual responding to the conviction of God and in his obedience and searching, searching for truth. And then God leads you to a place where you can find help or he just helps you if there's no one else to help you. And he'll just deliver you like he did me at the beginning because there was in the 90s, there was no Internet. I didn't get on the internet it was a place of work you know <laughs> work wasn't online so I wouldn't have found anybody with deliverance right so he did it himself uh, are you going to touch on the Jezebel spirit with that I you know not no no we're, we're gonna the main thing is you Jezebels are easy to to piss to spot out whenever a woman is dominating a man you are out of order Right? <laughs> you, 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 that's a woman taking over a man. You spot them a mile away, right? But, but what happens is what people don't understand is it is it, at one point a woman sometimes when the man is dead, he's not saved, he's not a God seeker, uh, he, he's spiritually lazy, he's in bondage, and the woman will get set free, right? So then she has to take the lead. She has to take the slack or it doesn't get done. She's got to be leading the kids and leading them spiritually. But at one point, she, her prayers get answered because who's praying the most for the spouse that's not saved? The, the wife, right? And so he finally gets saved. And so she's operating with the spirit because she's free of wisdom and knowledge. And now the man is rising up to take his position, right? And then she has to pull back and support him now. Now God speaks through him. Right. It speaks always to all of us. Right. I mean, this thing, I remember I laugh at it today, but I remember uh, I had never read a book in my life. I didn't read Cat in the Hat. 
I, I went to five years of college. I got a college degree. I did not read books. I daydreamed, looked out the window all my life, every class. If a class didn't have windows, I would have cracked up. I had to just daydream out the window. And, I, you know, my dad was a farmer. My granddad was a farmer, on and on and on. So you, you learn with your hands. This is my DNA. Sitting down back in the 70s, you couldn't move. You couldn't blink. You could only go to the bathroom like once every two days. <laughs> you weren't allowed to go every day. You know, you know, you got breaks. Hey, you do that in the break. You do that at lunch. I mean, it was strict and it, it cracked me mentally, right? Let alone the spirit world coming in, working towards your weaknesses. And so basically uh, <laughs> the story is my wife was raised in the church and her, her father was a pastor, good man of God, lineage of pastors on both sides of the family. And I remember I was 24. I just got saved. And I said, hey, I remember this. I, I memorized this verse. Uh, brings, it's, it's funny, but it just kind of hits my heart too. I read John three sixteen, and uh, she goes, oh, honey, that's great. And I felt great that she encouraged me. But I look back, all my kids learned that at three and four. So she must have been looking at the school teacher like, I really like, that's great, honey. But to me, I was being built up. Like I memorized this verse. I took time. So there's a point where the wife is raising the husband, you know, helping him with what she knows. And then she follows his lead once he takes off. Right. And we're always together because it's easy. That's why the whole church system, this is why the majority of Americans are broke, because we'll look at it and how he attacked the Jews, the leadership, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He got right into them. So the leadership system is broke at church and and it's set up wrong it's it's not set up everybody's looking at one man with some gifts and normally they got a good teaching gifts they got some charisma if you're better looking uh it goes further if you can sing man you're a gem you got jokes hey you're you're you're, you're excelling and adding people but the church was you know the apostle the pastor the teacher the evangelist right and and they you had all these gifts in operation right and uh now, one man, he's got the title deed to the church, right? And then he's, he kind of follows the board of elders. Well, that's like the CEO. He's only responsible to the board of directors. So it's ran almost like a company. They actually give you a company number, a 501c3 tax-exempt license from the government. So the system isn't meant to operate that the, the devil has implemented doesn't operate like God wanted to. You're supposed to surround yourself with a cloud of great witnesses. Why? Because the devil can get over on me. He's proven it. But if I'll share it with my brothers and sisters, someone's going to catch it. Someone's going to catch it. That's why many get in the habit of not gathering of the saints because they said, look, man, I have a hard time. I, I don't like, I love anybody I, I, God broke it down. The first person I was mentoring was a full-blown homosexual man in here. I mean, he was gone to the capital G. And uh, I know what he did was filthy, right? And, uh, and you know, oh, but God had me help him move three times. The, the, I, me and Brother Joe were tight. I'll help Joe move twice. Third time, I'll be like, bro, you're taking advantage. God just tell, told me, keep helping this guy. Keep helping this guy. Well, it broke. I mean, this guy was so, his friends, they were in the way. One time they were on the third floor of an apartment. I brought my trailer over and they were so, I said, man, you know, us going up and down. I said, why don't you let me and my worker do this? Why don't you two just stay boxing stuff? Like pretty much move out of our way. We moved this whole two bedroom apartment. But God was breaking it down. Do you see what the devil has done to this man? Look at his life. Look at his mind. Look at what he's taken. There had to be empathy. You had to have empathy for people. And so I don't have any empathy for a leadership that will allow people that have feminine traits. That, that's a mockery of God. A man is made in the image of God. We were, we, when we go to war, we're in World War III. And hello, Joe Biden told you we're in World War III. He said, Jack, that's what he called you, Jack, all American people that are listening. When the tanks roll in, we are in World War III. So hello, um, 
And America is being decimated by Satan because it was the freest nation in the world that could go forth boldly proclaiming the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And since we did that, we got all this favor and knowledge and blessing from God and the resources. So now he has to attack within to destroy the resources. And so we're going to be isolated, right? And so he has to do these things. It's happening right before our very eyes. And, uh, but I don't have any respect because a guy can sing like a bird and he's effeminate and feminism is close to homosexuality. It's close because you're taking on the characteristics of a woman and not a man. And I used to love that big Samoan dude that was on, uh, he didn't sing too long, but he was on uh, Hillsong. But he was a big Samoan guy, like 340, and he would sing, man. I was like, man, this guy could get us ready for battle. I mean, a woman singing is great, can speak to your heart, but there's something about a man singing the truth to get us to. So, look, the system's got all kinds of breaches in it, right? So, a man has this excuse and then this excuse, and so he starts retracting away from the body of Christ. That leads me to where I was going to start with the testimony. I sat down for a three hour lunch from a man who worked for seven years, one of Mike's and my favorite faith healers ever on the planet that we know, or at least the modern era from America. He worked for him for seven years, wrote the books, powerful, it's sold in that bookstore. And uh, the guy was telling me, I couldn't believe it, but the guy had favor from God like you can't believe on him. I thought he was our age, mid-50s. He was mid-60s. I mean, he was a captain of, of the fire department, retired. He had won all, he was the most decorated in the state of Nebraska, my, my buddy said, through doing all these saving people. And he said this, he said it was time, he said he died to himself. So he went all the way up to the controller and he didn't know it. Seven years of sitting down with this one of the most anointed, this guy that I'm talking about has one of the best healings ever recorded on YouTube, the guy that he worked for. And he said, I went 21 days to fast. It was time for me to start my own ministry. It was five years into it. And he said, uh, and I prayed in tongues for hours all day long. I didn't know I was going to go 21 days, one, two, five, a week, two weeks, went three weeks. And God revealed myself that I wanted my ministry for myself. I wanted to do things for God so people would see me in the same light that they saw this man and I would be respected and I would be desired and I would travel around doing all these wonderful things for the Lord, but there was so much me in it. And he wept and the guy was 65. This happened in his 20s. He was weeping while he was telling this story. So, but then the devil got to him. He went all the way up to that level. See, when you go to high levels, he, it, it is an old saying and Channel 21 tried to discredit it. It's really sad. It's really sad. They, they have a lot of carnality, a lot of flesh. They're doing things intellectually. And they, you know, they, they were mocking the old saying, higher levels, higher devils. I don't necessarily use that term. I don't like that term. But the reality is, as you rise up, the devil always has to oppose you. He's not going to, he has a system for the sinners. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's got a melody and a harmony and a rhythm for you. He's got tricks. He's got wiles. And he's snagging people. And they get in it because of their carnality, because a man is dead in his sins and trespasses. He's an alien and foreigner to the promises and the covenants of God. So he has a sin nature, and it just goes into operation. But the minute you're called out, uh -oh, you go into the same category as all these disciples that changed the world. He doesn't underestimate the Holy Ghost. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost and the promise. The enemy cannot get in there. So all you have to do is to come into submission to God fully and to retrain your mind, to renew it, to study and show yourself approved, understanding you're a workman, not needing to be ashamed, knowing there is shame for you if you won't study and know the word because he will catch you 100% of the time. Mercy and grace they cover a multitude of sins where sins abound. Grace does that much more abound, but you will reap what you sow and he will take advantage of you when you have ignorance to the scriptures because it was your job to read it. You got your mind and you go to work eight hours a day and you watch TV and you do all these things. This needs to be first because it's a war for your soul. It's a war for your ministry. It's a war for that day accountability when you give an account. So that devil has now learned the word. He got duped once when he crucified the sinless son of God. And now the keys of death and Hades were given to the son. All judgment is given to the son. All power and authority is given to the son. And he gives it to the believer. So he knows it's each individual born again believer is a time bomb 
waiting to go off. So he has to strike with his system, which we'll get into, and how he works and how he's attacking, but he has to do it. And then as you begin to grow, well, when you grow, what happens? People begin to want to, I wanted to be around Mike Smith. I didn't want to just dine and dash and get a deliverance and leave. I said, oh, he's learned some stuff that I'm not going to learn unless I sit down, we can fast track it. No need spending 20 years to figure this out. I can learn this stuff and whatever. Well, I had a expectation it'd be two weeks, but you know, <laughs> it was years, right? But I knew I had to learn some things. I'm still learning, right? I'm still learning how to give myself away. I'm still learning how to be loving and praying for people who take advantage of me, who turn on me, um, who discredit me, disrespect me. I'm still learning that we're all in this process, right? And to be able to then help those people and catch them, right? So we all have to overcome according to our weaknesses, according to our own personal struggles. So he catches them. He has to attack us, right? He's not just going to... He'll send somebody your way, okay? Uh, the guy that I'm talking about, I said, hey, was that guy on the up and up? Because Mike does a teaching and he talks about all these great generals that fell. Ellie Mae McPherson dies of a, a pill overdose. This other guy's drunk and gay. And I'm like, Phew. and it was like, whoa, like this is, t well, this guy didn't get him, but he got his wife, which, which she was a little crazy. And she would always disrupt the ministry and she'd run away into the woods and the two sons were drug addicts were dead before their dad. So it's a war and unfortunately, get gifts. I have seen it happen to ministers in here. You get gifts and you want to go out and you want to change the world. But if you don't take care of your family first, he's going to bring shame to you when your wife goes nuts, when your wife leaves you, when your kids are suffering with all these demons. So you got to take care of business first here. You take care of business at your home. Now it can all be happening at the same time, but you need to be intentional about your business, not running out with your gift, not running out because you learned the authority. I mean, it's easy to make demons manifest. I mean, if you got the anointing, you can make a manifest just by simply preaching the word. If you go down to the zone where the homeless people are and where the devils whittled them down to scraps, those devils hate them even hearing the word because they got them in a hopeless situation where that word is not proclaimed. There's fear and there's addictions that run. Well, guys go down there. I remember a guy was telling about deliverance. He goes, yeah, man, ministers go down there and I would be feeding food. And these guys are, ah, you know, they do all kinds of manifestations. So manifestations is not deliverance. Deliverance is, yeah, there might be a manifestation, but then we repent. Because we gave place to him. He's not in there for no reason. He's in there because either the sins of the fathers passed down to the third and fourth generations gave place to that spirit. It gave place because of your own sins or you were victimized, which someone abusing a child will allow a spirit to, to transfer. And so, yeah, you repent, you shut the door. Then they come out and now the person has to be instructed to maintain guarding that door. The first temptation was now sins passed down to Cain and Abel. And Cain's thinking about killing his brother because he's got a problem with God, not with his brother, but he's blame shifting. Blame shifting is whatever human does by nature. Along the lines of the homeless people, like Salt River Community Homes people down at Reddit Bike, I've been praying for them a lot and stuff. But, and some, I want to deliver some, but I'm worried because if they go back into addiction and there's that, you know, the deeds can come back even worse. Well, 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 the greatest deliverance, remember, is getting saved, right. where you're translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God through his son. Thing is, they believe in God. They even know the names of the demons that are running around. Down well, there. well, they, they, it's a difference between believe. Satan believes in God. The, yeah. the demons believe in God. They shudder at his name. But there, there has to be a love for God. If you're born again, there's a love initiated. I had all kinds of fleshly attractions to females, but I didn't love any of them. I only love my wife, right? I love some attributes. So those sinners, they're sinning down there, right? They love the attributes of God, but they don't love Him. If you love Him, you will obey Him. So like there's a couple of them like really know the Bible well. One was in ministry for four years, and he's like at a Teen Challenge place. And so like, they just still have an addiction problem. Well, well, okay. Well, he can do deliverance on himself. 
right? There, there's, he who is in him is greater than he who is in the world. The greatest deliverance is no. Now, there might be some spirits. I hadn't smoked marijuana for nine years. Go through this suffering, this loss of money, and I, rel I go back. Not relapse. I was straight looking for it, right? To take away my pain. Well, then I quit about two years before I went through deliverance. So I'm not even tempted with it, nothing. But when I'm going through deliverance, the Lord's telling me, this is marijuana coming out of your lungs. I was coughing like somebody that inhaled smoke looking over a chimney, right? So the spirits were in there. I had a level of deliverance by saying no. I knew it was him telling me one more day, one more time. So someone has to use their free will. Getting the demons out is down the road. You have to have a fight in you. God gives you a spirit of a warrior. God is a man of war. You have to tell somebody to overcome. You overcome them by the blood of the lamb. Now have a testimony. Testimony that you use the power of God. So you're going around, I exercise you in the name of Jesus. You're, you're, you're going to step forward with a guy that needs to get up over and trust God. God will come down and give him power. He takes no joy in him suffering, eating tin cans and food out of trash. He's longing to help that person, but that person has to stand on the, the principles and the power of God. Then when he's ready, then he can get all the spirits out. But look, there's no temptation given to man than which he can find the door of escape. Whether you're smoking crack, whether you're popping fentanyls, or you're a male stripper. You know, he, he, there's no temptation. You can choose not to get in your car and drive down to the male strip club. You can choose not to put that pill in your face, right? But... Hey, someone that makes quick money doing perversion, it's a, well, what I got to do, go work at Home Depot for 18 bucks an hour? Uh, oh no, if I don't eat this fentanyl, I'm going to poop and puke at the same time. Right. Well, there's, devil loads you up with sins and now the body is now physically addicted, so he makes it harder for someone to get out. But God will always supply everybody's need according to his glorious riches, which are in heaven. Deliverance is the children's bread for the God seekers, for those. Now, hey, if someone can't even operate and they're all, oh, you know, they can't even co conversate with you. You, you know, you, you can ask God, you can petition God in prayer. Lord, can you can you give this man mercy? He'll never make it unless you push back these enemies in his mind. Could you give him a few days? Could you give him a moment for me to share the word of God to push back these demons? But remember, they gave place to the devil by their own free will. Or because of their lack of ignorance of not studying, showing themselves approved, they're now suffering the shame of not doing what the Word of God said, receiving what the Word of God said, believing what the Word of God told them to believe, and he brought them back into addictions, right? So Satan comes down, he's tricking, he's working, he sees the anger in Cain, and he's saying, hey, you know, your way out of this is kill your brother. Then God doesn't need meat for a sacrifice, he'll take vegetables, Problem ain't with you. The problem is with your brother, and he one upped you. So he decides, I'm going to bash his brains out with a rock. That's a pretty vicious sin, right? Hand to hand combat, crushing your own brother, which you had no beef that's recorded. And God comes down in his mercy. And he says, Cain, if you do well, you will be accepted. I will accept you. God is the God of all mercy and grace. It's still in effect, even though sin came into the world through his dad, Adam, right? And it's reigning in him. But he says, sin's crouching at the door. Its desire is to have you. You must rule over it. It is what? It is the doorway. So he didn't. It comes in and boom, he bashes his brother's brains out. Right? So there's always power in the gospel. There's, you got to be able to bifurcate. Right? I believe you could pray for a healing with anybody. Right? Hey, that goes hand in hand. Sometimes God displays his power through your prayers getting answered, though they don't have those prayers with any kind of faith because they're riddled with addiction. But God will do a miracle and heal something busted in their life. I, I used to pray crazy prayers. I was doing homeless ministry for seven years down there. I worked down on those streets. I saw God answered prayers. I said, well, what does God need to show you? I'd pray for that and God would show it to him. And they'd come back two years later and said, God showed me exactly what you, you, you told him to show me. He did it, right? So God was answering my prayers. I prayed for some people to receive healings in their body, right? Many and most, you just build them up with the truth. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So you got to get a person to slow down because their brains will run automatically. Mike's got a teaching on it, autonomic processing disorder. Well, the devil will do it in your brain with scriptures. So here you come and it's his brain's moving. Oh, 
The devil's talking to him. Oh, here comes preacher Dan. Here he goes. Hey, you already know all these scriptures, don't you? And he kind of pulls back on the scriptures. And now you come and, you know, you know, God so loved the world. Yep, that he gave his only begotten son. You know, they just said, well, you know, there's freedom in Christ. Yep, whom, those, whom the son sets free is free indeed. Like he's rolling. But what he's trying to do is roll on right past you. You got to get a person talking to his basic needs. Hey, what do you need? You know all this. What do you need, right? What one prayer could could God do for you that would bring about change in your life, right? So it's got to be according to their will. If it was, I want to be delivered. I got a spirit in me. It's haunting me. It's tempting me. It's driving me. It's enticing me. It's manipulating my desires for me to do what I don't want to do. Well, then he's eligible for deliverance, right? So you got to be able to put people in the categories so that they can get something from you. Do you have one more that I skipped over and went over here? Or was that it? Amazing that you just did that. Uh, I'm very transparent. Uh, my son tried to kill me uh, in October. He's uh, 25. He lived with me all his life. Went to church. Uh, knows the scriptures. Uh, he knows right and wrong. But he didn't have Christ. Amen. He didn't have Christ. Sometimes God will use the situations that you're a lot not sometimes a lot of times God will allow a situation to happen to put you in a position where you're on your knees and that's where he is on his knees he will be saved yeah that's 100% he, he that's what God's allowing all this stuff to happen so whatever's coming at you isn't for the destruction of your soul but but he's using the devil Right. He's using the devil for his children and he and he shows you what's in you. So when I lost all that money, he had to show me what was in me. I equated the favor of God with my financial blessings. I thought they went hand in hand because I had learned it. I, all my favorite preachers were TV preachers. You know, they had me going to the phone, going to the phone, going to the phone. You know, I had all the plaques and little awards from tithing and giving. I wanted to be in good standing with God because I liked money. And since God owned the cattle on the thousand hills, I thought I would, you know, do my best to make him happy. So that would come my way. Right. Well, that system had to be uprooted. Why? Because trials come upon people who are upright. Job was a just and an upright man, one who feared God. See, most Christians don't fear God because they've never been instructed how to fear God. God is, is holy and righteous, and he has a plan that's holy and righteous for you. So when you don't do what God wants you to do, he has a way to catch you, to correct you, to convict you, to get you back on track. And a lot of times it costs you relationships and even health and family. Why? Because the enemy goes into operation when you give him place. So we learn that, whoa, how good God is, how merciful God is, how if I would have trusted God, I wouldn't have had to go all through that. But since I didn't follow God completely or submit completely, all these things have happened because of myself. I can't blame the devil. His system was already in operation. Now, once you get saved, hey, all things become new. But but people don't go in through the process, right? If if you go and get a 1967 Porsche 911T, right? One of the most collected collection cars being sold right now. And well, it's all beat up and tore up and well man that thing can be a gem they're worth a quarter million dollars right but if you don't do anything to it right it is still a porsche it still has all the capacities to be an incredible ride and to be a uh, an antique a play uh, uh, th something would only appreciate in value over time but you got to restore it well we have to renew our minds the restoration of our soul we have to be delivered from from the enemy who comes in and strikes you words are so powerful Words are, are, are so powerful. All we do is talk all day long. So we, we count. We listen to any old kind of thing, unfortunately. And the Bible gives the warning not to listen. Be careful what you listen to. You can't sit in these seats. You can't stand in these places. You can't get counsel from somebody like this. It's all these warnings of what would come in through the ears. Well, unfortunately, we face adversity. You know, you are this you have that. You will only be this. And it's things that I remember that changed the course of my life that were in elementary school. I didn't read books because of this setup from the enemy. I, I, it was pride. 
the demon of pride was in my family. My mother died a couple years back, and she had no wrinkles on her face, and I never saw her with a gray hair on her head, ever. She walked miles a day. She was a vegetarian for 40-some years, and uh, our house was, you know, nice and yard when she passed, a beautiful yard, got awards, one of the best yards in the neighborhood. Well, I got put in special ed, daydreaming, not wanting to do anything, pushing it. Well, my mother was very soft-smoking. My grandmother was a, was a very strong, brash woman. And she, my gra her, her husband, my grandfather died in his 30s, so she raised two kids, going to work full-time. She had a tough life. She was a tough person. So next thing in, I find myself in this meeting. It's my mother, my grandmother, my special ed teacher, and the principal. My grandmother does all the teaching, and she says, hey, we don't want Ricky in here. She said, why? She goes, because all the kids are calling him retard. Well, my brain has never been slow. I go, man, what kids are calling me retard? I never heard retard. This thing is so bad, retard everywhere, that their mothers feel bad for them calling me retard. They called my mother to say, hey, our sons are calling your son retard. We just want to let you know. So my mother calls a meeting between the special ed teacher, the principal, and my mother and grandmother for these Little rats calling me a retard. And in my mind, I said, well, they, they must see something I don't see. All of them saying I'm a retard? Man, what's wrong with me? And then all of a sudden, pretty soon, you try to study. You ain't watched for five days. Anything going on in the class? I said, man, I am retarded. I can't figure this thing out, man. They're, they're, they're doing this puzzle and that and, and this type of fraction. I just checked out. The devil got me to check out. I said, well, what I am good at hustling. And so I'll hustle this teacher and that teacher, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll have my cake and eat it too, okay? Because I'm not a quitter, so I'll be good at doing what I do, manipulating everybody. Well, well, the devil got me. It doesn't matter what you got. He got me with what? A lie. Mm -hmm. Then one kid comes at me. I'm in second, first grade, and he goes, man, you are ugly, man. You look like a big old caveman. You gotta, I'm going to call you big head every time I see you. I went and looked at a, in a reflection of a mirror, and I saw what he said. Sure enough, then I go to the photos of kindergarten, not thinking I'm a head taller than everybody. And I said, sure enough, my head is big, too. <laughs> so all my life, by the grace of God, for some reason, girls... Oh, it was never a problem getting girls, roller skating and dancing. And, but I said, oh, it's because I'm physical. I'm, I'm muscular because... Because I, I don't take no crap from nobody. That, that's why they like me. So, man, I better be doing all these things because a guy that has no women, boy, he gets put in last place. Doesn't matter if you're rich. Doesn't matter if you're a good athlete. You got no girls. These men will chew you up and spit you out at school, right? So I need to always have some girl to make myself feel good. Well, what do you do? You, you, you become who they want you to be because you really don't want to know who they really are. You just want them to be by you because you look good. So you're living this already this false reality of lies and and misrepresentation and leading people along and then getting used to doing it. And I'm only 13, 14, 15 years old. He's conforming me to treat women in a certain way. He's conforming me to be the man he wanted me to be. Hey, you'll have money. Well, hey, if you're willing to push the boundaries, I was a ticket scalper. That was the beginning of the boundaries. You're just going around, you selling tickets, you selling tickets. Hey, you selling tickets, you sure? No anyone selling tickets? You look like someone selling tickets. I mean, you get six cents, like pulling them out of crowds. And you're just working everything for two hours. Few pe Some people could go down and had a few tickets, you know, and you know, try to sell them. I, I was thumbing through people. For what? For money. That was the beginning, right, of doing something. Then pretty soon it's legal in Phoenix. It's not legal in California. You got to run from the police. Then you go to Oakland. You got to run from gangsters who literally will rob you and kill you. It was pushing the boundaries. So once he places something in you, and now you have to have something to be somebody, and now he says, now go get it, right? And along the way, you pick more and more spirits up until you're sick, by the time I came in here, I had arthritis in my knee. They told me I needed a knee replacement, hold on until I was 40 and the insurance would cover it. I had arthritis in my shoulder. And so I used to go to the naturopathic doctor. I would inject this sugar water for the healing of the joints. I couldn't afford it anymore. So I'm doing it myself with no anesthesia, with three inch needles in my knee, watching demographics on YouTube, trying to miss my uh, certain tendons and ramming it in my shoulder, grimacing in pain to what? To try to get rid of the pain. Oh, he was inflicting pain. 
and I was, I was only 40 years old. It started when I was about 38. I got no arthritis now. I, I, I eat too much. That's my own personal problems. But I, I got no problems in my body. Why? Because there were actually spirits of infirmity in my body. They were actually giving me arthritis. I had no knowledge of that. I went to church for 15 years with born-again believers who could get people saved, and they had no knowledge of it. So the teachings and the doctrines of man make the word of God of no effect. They can know and you, you won't have any faith to get a miracle because no one told you to be in the position to receive a miracle. You can get a miracle through prayer. You can get a miracle through Getting delivered. You got to be able to bifurcate. Is it natural? You go around breathing asbestos. You probably don't have cancer of bitterness and unforgiveness. You were working with asbestos in the 50s, right? So you got to be able to bifurcate, have some discernment what's going on. And uh, so words are powerful. Most people are inflicted with words. My brother looks like Brock Lesnar. He's 50. I mean, he's rocked. His, his arms are stretching out the shirt. Well, what happened? I know what happened. He was a strength champion at Nebraska, and he failed out. Found out the guy's a genius. My, my brother's read hundreds of books. He's getting his master's degree in theology. Uh, he's never got a B once football was over. Got a, uh, he's got a degree in business finance, and uh, he's mad. He, he's mad. And one time someone beat him up when he was in college because he had drank like 20 some beers and just couldn't fight. So some guy that couldn't have beat him, maybe one out of 20 times, beats him down, bloodies his face because he was drunk and he's got this in him. And man, he lifts and he eats protein. She's 50, he's sucking down protein shakes all day long. Well, it's because trauma was done to him. He lost something. Those Huskers, when he was there, won two national titles back to back in 94, college national champs. And uh, stuff was taken and, and he hasn't had those wounds. Now he overcomes because he knows the word of God. He's a good preacher. He's a good minister. He's a great dad to his children. His, his, his daughters both got full college scholarships for their academics. His daughter was one of the best ACTs in the whole country and had all these colleges line up for a full scholarship. Well, he's doing a lot of great things, but that doesn't mean the wound from past hurts and losses are taken away. But in his theo theology, he believes that you just overcome with the word, stand on the word, fight that feeling. I'm telling you, you can be delivered from soul wounds where you don't feel that stuff anymore. You don't feel, I don't feel uh, like I'm retarded. I, I don't feel like I'm ugly. And if I was uglier, the better off my life will be. Yeah. You're gonna have less temptations and it'll be less about you and you'll be easy sailing to die in. There's nothing to hold on to. It's the beautiful and, and the one that everyone pat, pats on the back and wants a piece of because of your physicality, your physical gifts, it, it's, it lingers longer. It lingers longer. So all that stuff was delusional, but hey, you're in that natural world. We weren't a born again family at that point. And he was able to run the game. And through the running of the game, he strikes you with word curses. And then he strikes your soul with, with abuses and abandonment and betrayals. And so deliverance is one thing, but you have to have the wounds removed first. Otherwise, the demons will come right back to the womb. You know, I mean, I've heard, uh, I worked in the jails for seven years with sex offenders. Almost every one of them was raped themselves. It's real. It's not a stereotype. And the one guy who became one of the best disciples I ever saw, uh, he says, you, I want to tell you what happened. And he goes, I don't want to tell you so you feel sorry for me. I think it'll be a teaching tool. This guy had the mind of Christ. I mean, he became a new creature. Was, God took out his controller demon first. Wow. He showed me what it was. I mean, this guy flopped. If we're on the ground, it's called man down. I'm mandatory to hit the red button and security comes in six deep with gas mast and, and pepper spray. And it's a canister of pepper spray. And uh, he falls on a table. And his tongue came out of his mouth. It looked like he had bought a cow's tongue o over at the grocery store and stuck it in his face. I didn't know a human tongue was that size. And it came out. And I'm freaking. i would never seen nothing like this to this day, even at the center. And everyone's all nervous. Like, do I hit the preacher? Do I hit the button? Is he dying? Is this a seizure? I said, nope. 
this demon's coming out inside. I'm like, maybe you hit that button. And I just kept going through the system, rebuking, rebuking. And that thing came out with a roar. Yeah. Well, God, by his mercy, took that one out because in his whole life was in shambles. His wife was about to leave him. He prayed and his wife didn't leave him. He had to spend the rest of his life in prison. God was doing extraordinary miracles for that man because he was only going to be there for six months. He was going on to prison for the rest of his life. So he had to fast track that man. So God will do whatever he has to do. If your deliverance is taken slow is because he's taking time with you so that you can understand more and help more people. You have a better catch all when you're helping them through the process. So anyway, he says, this is what happened. My, my uncle used to force me uh, to perform a sex act on him. And uh, I told my dad, and my dad beat me down for doing it. He, he punched me in my face numerous times. I was 12. And he said, uh, and I, a thought came in my head saying, hey, you're supposed to take this, and you're never supposed to say anything. That's why your dad is beating you down. He didn't catch his dad's beating him down because his dad thought there's no way my brother would ever do such a heinous act to a child. So it continued on for two full years and the spirit is telling him, you have to take this. Every man must be experiencing this some point of his life or at least in this family, that's how it works. And so when he was 14, he finally could fight back and, and he stopped it. He went on, he had a normal life. He was a member of the mega church down here in the West Valley. Uh, had a successful business, got married. But what had all changed is when he began to view pornography. All his life, he never wanted to think about that. All his life, if that thought came, he moved two steps forward, investing into work, investing into whatever it was to escape that pain. He never wanted to wrestle and deal with it. So since it was never dealt with and there's such embarrassment and there's no knowledge being preached at the church in which he's a, he's a staple in, he's a pillar, then he starts watching pornography and what was in him grew and took over till he essentially did exactly what that spirit does. That spirit molests children. So since it was in him transferred by him being molested, now 35 or 40 some years later, he's doing it now. Oh, so the lack of knowledge, people suffer the consequences. So things have to be dealt with, right? Now there was one guy who came through here and he says, confess your sins to one another. You know, and this guy writes a 16-page thing to Mike of every sin. This dude was 50. He wrote every sin he could possibly think of and said it to Mike. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. You're not supposed to. That's not what it's talking about. You're supposed to confess your struggles. What are you dealing with? Hey, you're supposed to have some discernment. Hey, I've been dealing with this rejection all my life. Hey, I've been dealing with poor self-worth and fear all my life. Hey, I've always craved getting a buzz ever since I was a little kid. I started huffing glue, and now I've been an addict four times. Uh, I, I can't stop looking at women's parts. When I see parts, I light up like a Christmas tree and can't stop the pursuit of more parts to feel more lit up. You need to be talking about your struggles. You need to be able to have some discerning of spirits, your own due diligence, and track it down. Where did it get going? What's the root cause of it? These sins, drugs, alcohol, uh, new age, these are all manifestations. Those are what we call bad fruits, right? A good tree can't bear bad fruit. A bad tree can't bear good fruit. So there needs to be some pruning. Why? Something wasn't dealt with. And so those are your bad fruits, but it's the root system. It's coming in. What's the branch to it? Then, otherwise, some people just want to play what Mike calls whack-a-mole, the game at Chuck E. Cheese, where for a quarter you could go around and hit as many gophers in the head as you could to try to win a prize. You can go ahead and smash and de demons like that, but it's a never-ending battle. So you got to get to the root cause. You know, the, 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 the victory of whack-a-mole is going over to pulling out the plug-in from that thing. You know, the, the, the victory is not putting a quarter in, playing the game. Just leave that thing alone, right? So you got to do your own due diligence. You're, you're a born-again Christian. Everybody that's born again has the mind of Christ. Maybe it's not completely renewed. Maybe it's not functioning on all cylinders, but you still have the mind of Christ and you have the ability to pray to your father who reveals all truth. And then he says, then you know the truth. So you need to find truth. He's the truth, the way, truth, and the life. So you ask for truth. He reveals truth. So then if you receive the truth, then you can be set at liberty. But so many people are asking what the problem is, and wanting freedom all in one deal. Those are the whack-a-mole players. 
right? Someone who really wants to be delivered has a prayer life. And he's praying real prayers. And he's getting real counsel. And he has a real intentionality of getting himself free. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he says, The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. So, so you're not fighting them, obviously, with your hands. You're not fighting them, you know, even with our voices, singing songs. You know, it's not carnal whatsoever. But it's mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds. Then you cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What does that mean? Anything that the devil's thrown at you that is not in the scripture is now an argument that's trying to exalt itself above God's word, above God's will, above God's direction. A stronghold was a fortress or a castle in the Greek, right? And it was in the mind, right? That's a stronghold. It's a whole network in your mind. Right. Working together in tandem. So what you're going to do is, is you got this power that comes from God so that you can cast them down. You can get rid of them. Right. The high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and then bring every thought into captivity and obedience to the word of God. That means he tried to throw something at you to challenge the word of God, challenge your faith, challenge the prophetic word, which God spoke to you. Then, boom, you know, he's trying to trumpet. You got to take it captive by what? Replacing it with the word of God. And the word of God is eternal. It's powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It goes into division. It can do some work if you'll take it and you'll, you'll believe it. You'll believe that word. It can go into operation and, and change some circumstances and some things that you believe. So before you get to the stronghold, the first attack of the enemy is the wiles of the devil. So he's penetrating thoughts. So if I would have been with a born-again Christian family and uh, I would have came home and I w would have been sitting at the table and I would have said, hey, this kid, I felt weird today. I mean, I could have normal conversations at five and six. I wasn't playing video games and watching TV all day. That's when you had to turn the channel with your hand. You got tired of watching TV. You got tired of playing video games. It was asteroids and Pac-Man. So my brain worked. I could have sat down. I said, hey, mom, uh, you know, Dad, this guy told me I was ugly, and man, I felt something. And man, I went home, I looked myself in the mirror, and I said, hey, you're fearfully and awesomely made. Hey, no matter what you look like, we think you're handsome, Ricky. And no matter what you look like, it, it, it's not about looks. So God, God looks at the inward heart. What's lovable about a human is who they are in here, and the way they treat people, and the way they do. It would have been completely demolished. That, that fiery dart from the wicked one would have been extinguished with faith of who we are, but we weren't saved and we didn't eat dinner together. And so he got over on that one. So the wiles, he's working with word curses. He's working with lies. And then what happens is he strikes your mind repeatedly over and over again, and he penetrates it. I remember a scene pornography at a, at a man, I hated this place. It was a, a lady that was running a... She was running a, a babysitter place, and my mother met her at a place called Tops, which was a weight-watching place where she learned the prop propaganda of women's liberation. These people were oppressed by the devil. She had a lot of adopted kids from different nations, and it was a, I, could, I didn't have discernment or any biblical knowledge, but I knew I hated that place, and I felt something evil in there. Not knowing evil, had never seen no haunted houses or any creature feature movies, but I didn't like it. I actually broke into my house three times to get away from not going there. And uh, well, that kid broke out pornography one day. And I remember that I had this ability. It came in my mind and I never understood why these two teachers never liked me and I never got them as my teachers. I, uh, Mrs. O'Mara and Mrs. Armstrong. Well, the reason why they hated me because they realized that kid's got pervert spirits. And so I had this little scanner, which didn't work on women who did not look like those naked photos. Uh, that only I could, I could go, ding, 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 and, and it would be, they were declothed because their forms looked similar to those naked pictures. If the body was built like that, I never tried to do the x-ray vision. So those two teachers were young and they had bodies like that and they knew they always I wonder what the riff was Well, when I went through deliverance I realized you got a creepy little creeper that had lust of his eyes trying to he didn't want to study So he just wanted to entertain his flesh through his eyes all day long. They wanted nothing to do with me So I didn't continue to look at pornography at that point because I was only in third grade 
So it started something, something came in, even if you weren't looking for it, even if you didn't have any discernment. My dad never warned me, never look at any naked pictures, it's going to wreck your life. You're, you're going to be led by your flesh, you're not going to make good decisions on what you really want in life. You're going to have all your life for that when you get married, and there'll be this sexuality that's only to be unpackaged when you get married. You open it this way, you're going to be masturbating and thinking about it and pursuing sexual conquest, all physical. I didn't have that knowledge. So I stopped and I was just doing it in my mind because those spirits were there. And then later as you hit puberty, then there was this desire. Then pretty soon it goes worse. Pictures, HBO movies, hey, that's not good enough. You know, went from, uh, somebody made fun of my roller skating thing with girls. So, well, it went from like that to like this now, right? The flesh was now crying out. I'm in here. You got a desire, now let's go do it, right? So this system, the devil systematically destroyed you. There's a movie called Nefarious. I went and watched it. I would have never watched it, but the guy that gave me his testimony said, you got to watch it. They did a great job explaining the gospel to people who watch those type of horror films. If you go to it, do not go early and watch those preview movies. Those are things you shouldn't even hear. By the grace of God, I went in there and the projector was, wasn't on. It only was audio until the movie came on. And, but I was just hearing the things were just horrendous. But the devil is exposing itself as he's battling with this psychologist and they're telling the devil's tricks. He comes in incrementally. Now, if you're raped, you can have a lust demon right away. I've met girls that are masturbating at four. Since I've been a one girl, she was, master, she was in her 30s. She had masturbated every day of her life. Didn't even know it was sin. So sin at one point can blind you. And so it had been her whole life. So there are some people like that, that something just came in the family line. Someone's doing heinous things. I've People's families that are swingers, right? Those people, those daughters, those sons are hijacked right away because the sins are just let in the house. The demons are let right into the house. They just go into operation, bringing everything out, all out of, out, of, out of line with God's word and sins run it. My family didn't live like that. My dad was with my mom. They were raised in the, you know, in the 40s, 50s, and uh, 60s, and they didn't live like that. And uh, so those things weren't in operation. It came in through what other people showed me. Boom. And then you get the counsel from the wicked. You sit in the seat of mockers. You stand in the way of sinners. And pretty soon the, that sin gets established. That actually became a motivation. You go look at guys. Guys do not go to nightclubs. And I don't know, it was $7 for drinks. That's when you could buy a six pack for $2.50. No one goes to hear music that's blasting your head off to pay 10 times what a drink costs, unless you can get at women who are inhibitions are broken down through inebriation, right? It's a system the devil sets up. And so those men are there for sex. Girls are in there for confusion. Oh, I'm just going to dance with my friend. Why is everyone salivating with their tongues out? Like um, devil sent you here to break down this instinct that women had to, hey, I need to evaluate a man. Could this man be a good provider? Could this man be loyal through the testing and the trials of life? Could this person love me through sickness and health? Or would they be a bouncer, right? Or they just take off when things got too hard, right? Well, you get them in certain environments, right? And then the pursuits of sin become easier, right? And then pretty soon, people are living for that. It's, it's uh, a sin-stained world. And then what happens? The sin comes in, comes in through the eye gates, it comes through the ear gates, comes in your body some way, and then pretty soon it, it's picking up demons, it's giving you pleasure, and then it becomes your actions, and then you're a practicer, you're a worker of iniquity. He builds a case on all human beings, so on the day of judgment you'll be thrown in hell. That's why God gives the list. The sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor the adulterers, the idolaters, you know, the murderers, the thieves, the liars. Their portion will be the lake of fire. So he establishes this network to bring you to hell. It's real. It's not just, oh, I'm, I do not believe that that, that that thing was cooked up from the devil himself. Once your savior, always say, that's a lie. What's true is, He'll never leave you and never forsake you. What's true is you have free will. 
And you can not be an overcomer. The Bible says those who overcome will inherit the kingdom of God. Those who don't and quit, God says, I take no pleasure in them. He's talking to the church. He's not talking to the outsiders, of course. All those sins were punishable by death, of course. The wages of sin is death. He's talking to the church that those who do those things and practice those things won't inherit the kingdom of God. Now he's breaking down to you your need to fight back, your need to do the right thing, your need to go through deliverance. So he works through wiles. This process then, as I would describe, it becomes a hold. He lied. He got a hold on me. Once he has a hold, Jesus said, hey, I'm going to the cross, but the prince of this world has no holds in me. He's not sending the Romans down to pick me up out of the Garden of Gethsemane. He's not dragging me up to the cross to be bloodied and beaten, head ran with a crown of thorns, nailed in my hands and feet. I'm giving my life. He has no holds in me. So once the lies penetrate your mind, he gets a hold. If you don't do anything with it, if you don't have the word of God, you're not born again, you don't get counsel, you don't have any knowledge, then he gets a stronghold. That's the castle. That's the network, right? So first it came in through the eye gates. I like looking at those pictures. Those things look good to me. No knowledge of the sin. There was some conviction there, but I don't know how to deal with conviction. I had no counsel. Everyone was kind of doing it. Then pretty soon this fortress is built. Hey, alcohol. Hey, telling women what they want to hear. Hey, get them in the right circumstance. Hey, let them believe you're that guy. You've, you've tricked their senses to see, does this person care about me? Do they love me? You know, do, do they want to be with me? Will they respect me? Will they be representative, you know, respectable if I bring them around my friends? Let's bypass it with lies. That's a fortress in your mind. And I'm just talking about lust. I'm just talking about one thing that every man deals with at some level. What about choice? Uh, human, human nature choice. I believe that. I believe every right, human has choice. I think the right and wrong is inherent. You have a choice to do or not to do. Well, absolutely, we got a choice at one point, right? So the Pharisees, uh, they try to trick Jesus, and they come to him and they say, "Hey, this woman was caught in adultery, and the law of Moses says she should be stoned." They're trying to trick him that they could have something to accuse him, and he goes, "Okay," and he stoops down on the ground. Doesn't say what he's writing, but he begins to write their sin. The things that only God would know because the Jews were whitewashed tombs. Everything on the outside looked good. They were doing all these things. The rich young ruler, he said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He says, you know the law, do not murder, do not steal, honor thy father and mother, obey the Sabbath. He named six things. And the guy goes, all these things I've done since my youth. He said, you lack one thing. He spoke to his heart. You're greedy. Sell everything. Well, when he's down on the ground, he's revealing the secret of the hearts, in my opinion, to all those Pharisees, because it says, from the older to the younger, they all walked away. Why? It says, because they were convicted in their conscience. So they were whitewashed tombs. Jesus, Jesus said, you are a brood of vipers. He says, if you knew me, you'd know my father. But since you, or if you knew my father, you'd know me. But you're of your father, the devil. But they still had a conscience. So, of course, everyone has free will. But what happens? Do you think these fentanyl addicts have much free will? Popping 16 fentanyls a day that are not born again? When you know one pill drops you dead? I mean, in my mind, you would think all of them would head down to a free clinic to go through detox. Get yourself on some, uh, what's that stuff they give them all? Uh, the, the process of getting off opioids. Come on, everybody's on that stuff. What's that stuff called? Methadone. methadone. You'd at least go to the methadone clinic, so that keeps you from pooping and puking on yourself, right? But they don't. Why? They're under control. The flesh is completely lit up. I talked about it Friday. I've talked to numerous prostitutes, and, and they, they would say, and a lot of them heard Jesus. Uh, numerous. Just one like a year ago up here trying to solicit me at Circle K on Osborne. And... And she goes, on. I said, well, what are you doing now today? I said, I don't know. I'm going to find a way to praise Jesus. I don't know how. I don't know where. But some way I'm going to praise him and do something to make him happy. Hey, maybe it's you. You ever, you ever had any encounters with Jesus? She goes, yeah, I have. I have. I believe in Jesus. And I said, well, what about making a change? 
and she gets defensive. It's like, hey, he's already covered all my sins. He's already died for everything. I mean, she had heard a lot of times, unfortunately, in the jails, I, it sounded just like a jail preacher. They, they don't want to go deep. A lot of times, unfortunately, they don't know the depth. It's a lot of older people, no disrespect, not to categorize them all in one, but the majority of them are older people in the twilight of their life, wanting to do good. Well, because they were born in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, they weren't subject to everything wicked that's in these people. So they have a little breach of understanding and uh, understanding the spirit world because they themselves weren't just controlled by demons like a prostitute, like a drug dealer, like a hit man, like a child molester, etc. So, yeah, we have free will and Christians got power to make those decisions. A sinner has conviction. A conscience, but we know the conscience can be calcified to where you don't feel it anymore. It's systematically whittled down where you don't care anymore, right? And, and he can do it to Christians too. I've met Christians who forgot all about their eternal life and salvation, even walking with God for years through drugs. And God had to wake them up in isolation in the hole. I just wanted to make a comment, and that is that spirit by three parts. So you have the spirit, and if we work at the Doing our minds with the word of God and our spirit grows stronger praying in the Holy Spirit. The goal is, correct me if I'm wrong, but the goal is to be able to let that lead, to be led by the spirit so that your body and flesh and carnality is not leading your life. And so a lot of times people don't understand that because it's not really talk. Okay, excellent. She said, hey, we're three parts. We're a body, we're a soul, we're a spirit. Yeah, absolutely. And so the only thing that's born again in you is your spirit, man, sealed with the Holy Ghost and the promise. The flesh is deceitfully wicked. Paul said, nothing good dwells in my flesh. Your, your brain is in your flesh. The brain has to be imputed or have input of the Word of God. And so, so your, your, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And, and that's where most demons are, is in your soul, in my opinion. I don't think they're all in your body. I think some are in your body, but there's some are in your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. It's a mystery. I mean, no one on earth can possibly explain it, your soul, other than what it is, how it works, and now the spirits can get in there and operate. They cannot get in your spirit, man. So it says, those who walk according to the flesh will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the, of the body, you will live, right? And so we walk by faith and not by sight, right? That's the whole, the Word of God is Spirit and is life. So yeah, we're renewing our mind according to the Spirit of God, the Word of God. And we're denying our flesh. That's where first level of deliverance is. you got to crucify your flesh. You have to die to yourself. It keeps trying to resurrect itself. It keeps trying to give you these cravings and feelings and desires and fantasies and hopes and dreams. And it has to be renewed. So 100% uh, that is the case. So wiles, hold. You don't stop at the hold. Stronghold. That's a castle. Then you're oppressed. I believe that most Christians, when you go to church, are oppressed of the devil. But it manifests in many different ways. He doesn't need to have everyone an attic. Somebody would probably wake up and smell the roses in the body of Christ. If they were all out smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee like Alcoholics Anonymous, that's how they all get down before they go in the services. Never been in a service, but I watch them, you know, before they walk in the door. I've drove by a few plumes of smoke. Those are addiction spirits. So... If everyone was like that, someone would wake up. So the oppression is just to block you from the knowledge of God. His knowledge uh, and His will for your life to be an overcomer, to bear fruits that last for all eternity, to be able to help somebody. This testimony I heard of Sister Stephanie Kelly and, and Mike worked for, with her for years, literal years. And when I saw her, she kind of had a breakthrough, and I heard she was here for years. And I kind of like, hey, how you doing? And bolted. Like, I don't need to be another one of the people that help people. You know, I, I, my thought is, you're working with someone, stick with the person, right? Because we ain't telling you nothing different. We are on one accord. We believe this word, and we have received deliverance. So you're not going to find someone's going to say, oh, no, you don't need to do that, man. I think you can still have all success in God and still live like that. It's not going to happen. So I didn't even say nothing to her. You know, I just 
going about my business, staying in my world. Well, she gets on the Zoom call. Mike says, hey, God did something special with this girl. I said, well, hey, that's all I need to hear. You, you're saying that. I don't hear that from a lot of people. And uh, I said, Mike's got a good track record. I saw Kelly and Arnie come the first time. I'd been here for a year. And Mike says, uh, hey, I see something in that girl, uh, Kelly. And I said, yeah, I do too, all those muscles. I was like, she's super muscular. I think, you think that's going to translate over to deliverance? And he goes, no, nah, I just got a feeling from the Lord. I'm going to try her out. She's going to help out around here. I'm like, hey, I got no doubts to question you. You, you. you help me, so keep rolling. Well, anyway, so when he tells me God did something with Stephanie, tells her, get her on your Zoom call. I got, plug her right in. Well, it was her time for a testimony on Wednesday. I just flew back from Nebraska, and I didn't, wasn't going to listen to it, right? I don't listen to all these YouTube preachers and all that. I'm to the point, I want to get revelation from God. I don't mind a good story. I love good sermons, but I'm not out there YouTubing, right? Give me some flash. Give me something cool. You know, who's the hottest guy? What's your name? Demon Slayers? You're the, you're the King Cobra Killers? You know, so I, I'm ready to walk out, right? Uh, and God says, sit down right there. Hey, make yourself comfortable. You can lay down. I got a little five-foot couch. Can't lay all the way down, but get yourself comfortable. I wept through this testimony. I mean, this thing was powerful of someone getting delivered. She said, I was delivered. She came all the way from Alabama, gets delivered. She said, I lost my deliverance in 30 minutes. Oh, I'm going to get to the good part. I'm going a little long, but I'm going to get to the good part fast. But it's in the mind. It's all in the mind. He would begin to shoot negative thoughts because Satan's thoughts come into her mind. She receives them as her thoughts. He gets placed and he bulldozes again. He sends all the demons back. The Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Hey, I struggled. I went back to sin a couple times in my frustrations because things weren't going the way I wanted them to go. And let me tell you, everything came back. If I'm dipping in sin over here, best believe anger, frustration, little fear. It all is coming in through the same gate. Most people do not have that mindset when they're going through deliverance to guard that gate. This ain't no joke. You ain't just getting a little orgasm with some other person that's not your spouse and, and going to have to repent of lust. No, you're going to get it all, and then you'll get worse, way worse. So it's serious business. So she goes through this process. And I'm like, whew, wow, they all come back. That's so sad. I got empathy for all these Zoom call people because no offense to all of them. I love them. They come to tune on. Most of them won't even turn their cameras on. I got to talk to blank screens and pray for someone. I, you know, come on, man. You got to face Satan. You got to face the music. So I, I already have a little, oh, if this is how easy they're to come back. I'm thinking there has to be great boldness and great fight and great unity, you know, to fight these spirits to really get what we're trying to give you with me and Pete and Stephanie and, and Danny. So she gets to this point. That's where I, I break down. I wanted to be a singer. I couldn't sing, she said. I wanted to write books, but I couldn't even read good. She, she names like five things. She goes, on this earth, I was good at nothing. She said, but in Christ, he goes, I'm now good at something. I'm good at two things, loving God and helping people. I said, oh, she hit the pay dirt. She hit the pay. She was down there when they're digging. They're looking for the dirt that's got the gold in it. She's hit it, right? That's, that's, that's everything. And then it was just a perfect example that God's not a respecter of persons. He's not looking for talent. He's not looking for charisma. He's not looking for superior intellectual people. He, he uses you where you are with what he gave you. And if you got any lacks, then he'll supply all your needs according to what he has, his glorious riches. And so it was powerful. Wiles, hold, stronghold. Oppression. Most Christians are oppressed. Then if you don't stop him, you're depressed. Depression. David talked about it. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face for, from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? That's depression. Even with the, Jeremiah cried out in a prayer after he was beaten. 
by a priest of Israel and boldly declare the word of the Lord, cursed be the day on which I was born and the day which my mother bore me. Let it not be blessed. Why did I come out of my womb and see toil and sorrow and spend all my days in shame? Oh, there's, 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 there's depression. If you don't stop him with depression, you go into deception. Once you don't know truth from a lie, and the devil is the masterful deceiver, then you become blind. All the Pharisees were blind. He said, you are blind guides. You sail the seven seas to make one convert. When you get a hold of him, you make tw him twice the son of hell. They were doing the opposite of what they thought they were doing. It was completely upside down. And so that's the seven fold plan of the enemy. Wiles, lies striking your mind. He penetrates your mind. He gets a hold. Oh, then he builds a fortress, which is the stronghold. There's all kinds of spirits going to operation. There's a network of them. And then you're oppressed. You're depressed. Then you're deceived. People are going through the motion. You can see them at church. They're like this. They're, they're deceived. They're not completely blind because they're still going to church. There's a little sense of hope, but no one knows how to help them. And they're afraid to help them because the people are so needy and so desperate and so confused that if anyone will open a lifeline of human communication, they'll just take a mile. And the devil knows how to use those people to take a mile so that you, you learn to shut them down because they run like a bandsaw. Oh, you don't know what was done to me. I, I've had this done and I had a father who touched me when I was five and I had these people come against me and they just rattle, rattle, rattle. And the person goes, oh, my God, I got to get the heck out of here. So the devil has a perfect way to isolate them. So people get used to seeing them there and get you used to feeling that there's nothing they can do. I was first going through deliverance. I was having uh, some lunch in San Diego and it was a perfect example. And these two Christian ladies were sitting next. Should we pray? And then this lady starts opening up. This one lady had all her stuff going together. And she goes, oh, I, I like this church. I was at this other church and they treated me this way and they left. And, and all these people did me wrong. And, and you really have empathy and you care. And I'm so drawn to you. And I'm so excited. You're so pretty too. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a spirit. It's trying to suck the love out of this woman. So she's afraid to give any more love. She's not going to have any answers. I said, honey, this might not go well. You might want to make it your way back to the hotel. And I said, hey, I want to let you know about the spirit world. I hate to intervene and interrupt, but I've been learning all about the spirit world after 10 years of ministry. What's happening is you have rejection spirits. You now have fear. You now are looking for someone else to comfort you and to give you validity and give you a position. It will never happen. It has to come from God. It's from within. And it's spiritual. And its desire is to suck you dry until she's then offended and goes to the next church because it's already been three. That lady was, <laughs> that other lady was like, really? She wanted more. And I <laughs> told her the website, this, this, and that. And the other one was like, beat it. And I said, okay, thank you for listening. And it went right, she went right back into operation. And then when we go here, like I never said a word, just right back into the conversation. Oh, that's, that's people that are oppressed and depressed. And they're looking now because they're blinded. For something that can never help them. Only the word of God can help you. Only the love of Jesus Christ can break through. That's why we have to have love so that they can trust us when we say the things that are tough. It's tough to tell people the truth. It's tough to stand firm and not compromise to get someone to quit complaining. <laughs> no, we cannot do that ever. No way, no how. Uh, I'm a licensed BHT and also a detective. What's a BHT? Behavioral health technician. Oh, okay. Um, are you saying that there's no such thing as clinical depression? Oh, well, I mean, there's mourning. Uh, there's, there's, there, something was done to you unjustly. You, you, your business was stolen from you. You get this private detective deal and the CCP comes in and says, we do all the detective work. You're out. That's been your life, your, your job. You've helped so many people find recovered assets and families be reconciled. And your job, you think you're not going to be depressed? When they implement their rules over you and you got to re at 50, figure out a new skill and a new life? 
Yeah, you're going to be depressed. Of course, there's natural depression. But when you can't shake it, at one point when your job's down and your money's down, you, you got to kick the dust off your feet. Once you get a little 310 pounds, at one point, I'm going to have to be like Brother Joe. And I've been to lunch with Joe, and he took the fat off the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking if my, if my food would have came with extra fat, I would have been extra happy. So at one point, I got to make some decisions. That don't mean I got obesity demons. I got to change my mind. I got to change my behaviors, right? I got to work myself through something. You start eating a little less, working out a little bit more. You see a little bit of success. You, you go all the way through. But when you can't go the way all the way through, when you can't have your own free will, now it's spiritual by the process of elimination. I think you should test everything in the natural. I think the first thing a Christian should do is, wow, I got to repent. Oh my, I got to tell the Lord, I'm sorry. That's what repentance is. Oh, what did I, how did he get me? What verse did I not stand in? How, how am I way over here? He needs to do a calibration according to the word of God. And then he needs to make a pursuit. You know, you might call a couple buddies. I remember when porn first started coming out on the internet. And I remember one day I was doing what guys do, trusting themselves. And I remember it was going like this. It was dial up. <laughs> And right at the top was the credit card numbers. So I already said, I ain't giving them my credit card. One, I'm cheap. Number two, there's a paper trail to that. Let's see what's free. I get down to where I shouldn't have seen, but it was only halfway. And I said, I don't want this. Conviction had enough time with dial-up to speak to me. It had enough time. I called my buddy. I said, hey, I was on my way to do something you don't want to do. I've been long gone with any of that stuff. And man, I made it to the chest. And he goes, all right, brother, let's pray. Let's pray. And he says, now I'm going to hold you accountable. And every time he saw me, he says, hey, man, you, how are you doing with that? Are you, you been on the up and up? And he looked me dead in the eye. Like if I would have been lying, I would no, yeah. He did call me out, right? I, so you got accountability. You should go through the process, right? So I didn't have demons at that time, right? High-speed internet made demons high-speed, <laughs> able to rush you. Right? You had a little smoke and marijuana and you're all fleshly. Boy, he's got a system for you. You can get infected fast. So, of course, you should be quick to repent, quick to receive God's forgiveness. With his, his forgiveness always comes instruction. You should then pursue. But let me tell you, if you got some holds, you'll feel them. Right? The three levels of deliverance. First is the deliverance uh, from your flesh. The second level of deliverance is, is freedom as a minister of God. We're all ambassadors. We're all ministers called to bear good fruit. And if you can't bear any good fruit, if you can't get your love to somebody, if you can't help make a disciple, then the great commission is being blocked by a spiritual force because it's your desire. The word told you to do it. The Holy Spirit empowers you to do it. Something's holding you back. And then the final level is the controller who just works off the words. He just keeps whispering to you. Oh, he talks. At first, they're striking you, a flaming arrow, but he's the talker. He's the convincer. He convinces you that your way is okay. He convinces you that things aren't spirits. He convinces you that there's time to change. He convinces you whatever you're doing isn't that bad. He convinces you that somehow you're not subjected to the rules and regulations of God's word. Oh, that's the third level of deliverance we talked about. So, wrapping it up. I believe he's the final one to go, in my opinion. I believe he doesn't always have to be like the man I told you the example of. He got that controller out. And he took off like a green leaf. Most people don't go from a child molester with greasy hair. He came in. He goes, preacher, I was on the bus and I was coming. And I was like, oh, Lord, help me with this dude. I got a full nut job here. I mean, my, that's what my thought was. So to go from that to fully a minister is the controller came out. Most of us, we have to grow. Why? Because of our experiences to be able to help people. The controller, the devil works off your free will. So slowly somebody had to talk you sweet and nice into something. And then he lets in the fortress in your mind. And then he starts saying, hey, we're going to the club. Hey, there'll be music here. I mean, when I was going through, starting to look for deliverance and, and, and listening to Mike, and I went through demon busters, prayed all these prayers. Someone was telling me, you need deliverance. He said, go forgive everybody. First thing I thought was money. 
I wasn't forgiving everybody of every word curse, of every betrayal. I just called everyone who owed me money, which was about six people, and said, you don't owe me money no more. I was partially blinded, right? The spirit that set up the blindness, the spirit that set up the spirits that were moving in me was a whisperer. He, he sounded just like me. I now have got him out, so now I can backtrack him and say, hey, he was right there working through my mother. When he said, when I heard I was a retard, he was right there with that man, Eric Zorns. He was on E-Entertainment. The lotto, he won the biggest lottery in America. That was the guy that cursed me, right? Uh, but I didn't have any ill will against him. I ended up smoking weed with him in my 20s and would never admit to him that, hey, you cursed me one day, and I still think of myself a little less than. You know, I didn't have a problem with him. I just believed the word, right? So it was a subtle demon that needed someone to speak the word, someone to make that word in which was spoken convincing. He's a very subtle master of dece deceiver. That he, he doesn't want you to know he's there. Of course you know something's there if you're watching porn. Of course you know there's something there if you've slept with a hundred dudes. Of course you know something's there if you were into witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. But the spirit that's leading the whole thing is subtle, kind of like Stephanie's testimony, that that spirit was a subtle speaker. He was a subtle convincer. Hey, you're a loser. So what's that? Where does that one come in from? Like what sins are... I believe they're assigned. I believe that they're assigned just like a guardian angel. As the kingdom of darkness took a third of God's holy angels against it to lead the rebellion, some of them are so wicked they're in chains because they're so wicked they can't even be here. So I believe they're assigned. They're at least assigned to family members. And then, hey, when he cooks somebody, you know, mom and dad are already cooked. They're never going to do anything for God. Then he moves down to the children. I don't know if it's one per family, one for genealogy, but he goes into operation, getting someone to sin, getting someone cursed, getting someone word cursed, uh, manipulated, violated, betrayed, and then he gets the network in there. Right. I just want to say something. I got rid of that demon, that controller, a couple of days ago here. Praise God. Now, I'm, I'm 68, and I carried a demon since I was 8 when I got molested, and more of them like that demon. But it became the voice. I knew that. I didn't know it was a voice. I thought it was me talking, but I became friends with that voice. And he talked to my children with a pretend friend. I've, I've talked to this demon for 60-something six, six years. That demon got me introduced to pornography at 12, and whenever I can remember to, the, to this, always that voice. Uh, go just look once. You've been good for a week. You haven't looked in two days. You haven't looked in. You deserve it. And, 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 would talk, and I got to have conversations with him regularly and would just go ahead. When I finally was going to cast him out, when I got, he knew he was getting close. He's like, You don't want to lose me. I've been with you for your whole life. I'm like, I got rid of other demons. That's why I know how they work. I've been through it. I got rid of all my demons from all that. But that last one held on to was my stronghold. Took me all, I've been practicing the medicine for four years. So the last one got by here is why I came here from Alabama for that. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I this girl because she's from Alabama. But, anyways, that demon got gone. And, and I remember not, I remember being afraid of losing him because I've talked to this voice back and forth conversation for all my life. He's gone. I heard him, and I never didn't hear from him. He's gone. I saw him leave. The young lady here helped me through it. That being in a form, I, it's gone. He's not talking to me. I know the guy. You so I saw him in a minutes of four years? I've been going at it for four years. I got rid of like lots and lots of demons because it was a whole life of abuse and drugs and alcohol and yeah. suicide and all that nonsense. But this stuff is real. I'm here to get better equipped on how to perform deliverances because I'm very new at it. But that was my last one finally. Today. So this is real. I mean, a couple of days, but this stuff is real. Amen. Okay. Well, let's take a look at some of the things that will help you as we close to help other people. Is number one, everything is you got to represent it, right? Well, I didn't want to listen to anybody talking about the gospel that didn't have any joy. When we're talking about Jesus and the joy of the Lord, I'm like, bro, keep that joy. I'm looking for another joy that comes from Him. Well, you need to work on yourself, right? You got to remove the plank out of your own eye. Then what does it say? You'll see clearly how to remove the speck. What, what does it take to see clearly? Discernment, discerning of spirits, timing, patience, understanding. A lot of people on YouTube do not have timing and patience. I heard a minister say the other day, it's not my job to judge someone if they're saved or not. I'm just supposed to call, pray for them all. No, you're not praying for them. You're casting demons out of them. 
So he got those two confused. And deliverance is the children's bread. I need to be able to have some discernment. Do I need to leave someone, lead someone to Jesus? Uh, from my experience, Paul said, hey, you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, but you don't have many fathers, for I betrothed you to Christ, right? So when you lead someone to Jesus, they trust you. They're easy to get delivered, okay? And uh, so that's the ideal system, right? We just go like butter, get them saved, begin to disciple them, get them delivered. It can happen in the same day. Sometimes it happens a little bit later. You get them baptized in water. You get them filled with the Holy Spirit. We know all those are interchangeable for different people. They can happen at different times. With Cornelius, it all happened in the same day. Deliverance wasn't recorded, but I believe it was in there as well. But we know that the baptism, the filling of the Holy Spirit, and salvation all came in one day. So we're not robots, right? We're pliable. We're sensitive to the Spirit and what He's trying to do with that particular person. Here's the problem with most people. If you can get this one thing in your head, you will be a blast for today. Is It's not your job to go around fixing everybody, right? Your job is to be led by the Spirit. And he sets up these divine appointments, right? Sometimes I'm looking for somebody. Hey, sometimes I got an instinct. Sometimes I'm at the right place at the right time. I need to start casual conversations to get things kicked off. We're humans. We're out there fishing and part of the fishing process, you know, you're going to find someone. But you can't be talking about demons when someone's not even born again, other than when they expose their struggles and say, hey, this is a spiritual world. I'm not holding anything back. It's a spiritual world. And God is a spirit. When we worship him, it's in spirit and truth. He has holy angels who are spiritual. And you don't see them 99.9% .9 of us ever. And there's also the kingdom of darkness. It's a complete kingdom under the orchestration of Satan. That's fine to explain all that. But the gospel is the glorious good news of Jesus Christ. That's the greatest deliverance is when someone comes from the power of Satan over to the power of God. And then in that process, you'll be able to get them delivered. Of course, if they're smoking some crack, let's go ahead and get them delivered that day, you know, um, et cetera. You're going to be able to discern, but you have to do the work on yourself and you have to be pliable to have some discerning of spirits. And you got to represent it. If you're all confused... You know, the sign of you being confused is when you can't look people in the eye. If you don't think you're confused, people think you're confused. When you can't look at somebody and they can't see some purity, some trust. When I look people in the eye, when I look women in the eye, at first they're like, oh man, I got a sexual problem. I don't want to tell this guy. When I look him in the eye, it goes out the door. This ain't that guy. You know, this is who God made. As, as a man. He's not like this or that or what I assume, right? So you have to work on yourself, right? And you got to get over this neediness, needing everybody else. The Bible says, now it's good to get help from everybody, but you got to be doing some work on the inside, spending time with God, asking him to reveal you truth. The Holy Spirit's job. That's why we don't, we don't talk to demons. Why? In my mind, why would I? There's one verse where Jesus said, who are you? Well, if I'm the creator and I want to know how you got a guy to be a cutter running around naked, full on schizophrenic and breaking chains, uh, he's got the right to do it. I'm not God. I didn't create him. Right. So why would I want to interrogate a demon where he came from, what his legal right was when I got the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is the great one. He leads and guides me. He's the God of all wisdom, God of all truth. He's the God of revelation. He's the God of discerning of spirits, and he'll give it to me to help that person. Demons will lie. Everybody's tried that talking to demon stuff. Uh, I, had, I admit it. I tried it a couple times when my office was down there, and they proved themselves over time to be nothing but liars and deceivers. They'll never quit doing what they do. Courts of heaven, I'm going to take you up there and try you. Um, I help a lot of those people that do that stuff. I have helped probably a hundred of them. And I believe, in my personal opinion, when you do that, you actually allow a demon because you're working with a person who's a man of God. A man of God is supposed to, tell, or a woman of God, is to take you on a journey in this realm, in this natural world, but in the spirit. And so if a man or a woman of God is using the authority over demons, begins to take you on a journey, I believe that journey can take those demons deeper into their soul. It makes them very hard to get out. One thing that you'll find with everyone who talks, had demons talk to him. Why? It was Saul lost his kingdom by talking to the witch of Endor. Well, I'm not in trouble for talking to demons because I'm trying to get information and do something good. 
Talk, yeah, I'm talking to a demon. How'd you get in there? Oh, red rum. I'm red rum. Came in from, you know, I don't need red rum. I, I don't, I need the Holy Spirit. Demons come in through doors. Doors are open through lies, which are the wiles. Repentance is what a believer should do with this born again nature of having a good heart and wanting to serve God. He's been taken away. The heart of stone has a heart of flesh. He has a right spirit to receive the promises of God. Why would I want an evil spirit to be using his tongue and his mouth? And many times they're saying, I didn't know things were in there until I started talking. Some of these guys... Courts of Heaven will have 15, 20 minute conversations with demons using the people as the medium. It's insane. Well, I'm telling you, they're, they get jacked up. Would it make for a good YouTube video? Red Rum, having a little conversation with Red Rum, telling Red Rum, I'm sending you to the lake of fire. And he, Red Rum, makes the person cry and flinch and jitter. When I start talking about Osmodius and Cosmodius who came down from the great, great quail god, and now I say, oh, gee, what encyclopedia did you learn all these demons? Come on down to simple reality and speak to the manifestations. Amen. Deaf, dumb, infirmity, keep it simple. Amen. You get into all that, you're going to be forever learning and never come to the knowledge of the truth, and you're going to get people more sick, and then you're going to get sick. And if you go look at most of those guys, they're cracked up. You go around wearing a priest collar, taking crosses. Now, if you had to put a Bible, I'm not knocking anybody with the Bible thing, but how they cast it, I, I started thinking, it's like, hold on, man. They, the, the Torah, the, the law and the prophet was a big old scroll. Did they have backpacks? And they didn't have the New Testament. So they're pulling out these backpacks, putting one on each ear, you know, getting the word on them to get the demons out. You don't need to put a Bible on anybody. The Word of God is written in my heart and in my mind. The Word of God is a sword. The sword is used when you speak it. The power of life and death are in the tongue. I speak the Word of God. I stand on the Word of God in faith. And then God comes to perform that Word because I stood on it. He's the deliverer. I'm not driving a demon out. I'm not courting you in heaven. I'm not. I'm standing on the word of God of the promises that whom the Son of God sets free. If that person will repent and believe the gospel, he is eligible for liberty from a demon who is essentially trespassing in his flesh, or he is now trespassing because the person repented and the legal right is taken away. And then the finger of God comes down and drives that demon out. Not my big mouth yelling. We had that problem when we first started here. This place was a zoo. And it was yelling. Bah, 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 bah. Who could yell the loudest? And it was like, man, you were the best if you had veins pop out the side of your neck. Like, ooh, man. They got the anointing because look at the yelling has increased blood pressure to pop through their neck. No, no. You speak to the mountain and the mountain will be removed. It'll work just fine and you won't cause confusion with the next group of people that are sitting down with their children in the lobby to get their kid delivered from porn. They won't run out the door because eight people in here are yelling like mad dogs. If you yell a little bit, hey, it's all right. Everyone gets excited. Just start thinking, hey, it's not the volume of my word. It's, it's the power of God's word. It's your position by standing in faith. And then you keep working on yourself. But you know what's a demon. If you got all kinds of problems, and you name them, bing, 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 and something's saying, go help people now. You know about deliverance, cast them out, go get them. Go get them. Your job is to go get them. Your job is to, you know this knowledge. Even your pastor doesn't have this knowledge. He doesn't know about casting out demons. He has 5,000 people, but you know about deliverance. You should be doing what he's not doing. You got a job to do. That's demons telling you to do something good out of timing. <laughs> You, you go ahead and be patient. You start working on yourself and it'll be like Pete. Pete said, hey, when, when am I ready? And then he went through a roller coaster. I said, hey, when you're ready, God will send somebody your way. He's driving down the street. Some guy's honking the horn, trying to follow him on his motorcycle. His instinct was, man, did I rip this dude off back in the day when I lived like that? Whips into his plays, jumps off the bike in case he's got a fight. And the guy goes, hey, God told me to follow you. I'm going to kill myself. God said you could help me. I said, ooh, that's, you talk about God sending someone to you. That's, that's exactly what he'll do. And then he helped that guy go through deliverance. Wow. Right? And so he'll send when you're ready. There's the, the harvest is ripe. No problem with the harvest. The laborers are few. Your job is just to ask you go through your issue, right? You go once you say, "Okay, hey, I'm 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 able to get up in the Bible and in the in the morning and read my Bible 
Hey, I'm actually able to pray un, uninhibited with negative thoughts. I actually have some love for some people that I used to hate. This thing starts moving and growing. The Holy Spirit is now flowing. You're ready. You're ready. But when you got 8 million problems, right? Now, I'm not, you got 8 million problems. We're all in the process. I'm not against you delivering. When I, I got my kids delivered. Real soon, I was. I thought I was delivered, but I had a whole lot more to go. There was layers that I was blinded to. It says, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to them that are perishing, and whom the God of this age has blinded the minds who believe not. That's not just not believing the gospel. That's not understanding all the parts of the gospel. So I was still blinded, yet I was able to help all my kids get delivered. And so, yes, you can help them, especially your immediate family. Um, but when you go out, looking for someone here and there, then it, it becomes, you, what, what I see is the manifestation of that is I, I tried to slow down a few people that were doing that and they were putting it on YouTube and they were jacked up. And I said, hey, I heard you got a YouTube channel and you, you get these people that are demonized, manifesting and screaming. And I said, man, this is making a show of deliverance. This, this isn't right. And these demons aren't coming out of these people. You keep, you keep showing the power of God, which draws people but it's not helping nobody. You're, you're going to have somebody continuing to repeat this cycle of what you're instructing them to do, and that's that's wrong. You, you need to go through your deliverance. You told me you're still struggling with these many things, and then you can get the demons going. You're doing good. I said, go ahead, bring them here. I'll work with you. We'll work together. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, after bringing a few people, he did have an anointing. He was bringing some people, and uh, but he, he didn't want to wait. He didn't want to be patient, so he went back, and, and unfortunately, hopefully he comes back. I haven't seen him. Why? Because you get po all the social media is based off positive affirmation. You know, I don't read any of those comments because I don't need their affirmation. I don't need their criticism. Right. I don't need none of it, but some people have tuned into it and there's some sort of value and self-esteem and worth and validity and and whatever comes through that. I, I don't need that. Not that it's bad. And Mike reads them all so he can pick them off and go help them all and send them the miracle <laughs> list. You know, there's a lot of work to be done reading your your comments, but that's what that is. It's, it's just work. But some people are doing it. Um, because everybody, when they're sinning or they're out of timing, they have itching ears and they want to hear what they want to hear because deep down they want to do what they want to do at the timing at which they want to do it. And unfortunately that system burns out. So you're going, but then soon, you know, it's like a, it's like a fine tuned motor. You know, you, you spin a bearing when you spin a bearing one, one of the little BBs in the bearing spins out. Well, first it's just a little, and then it gets up in the cylinder, and now you got a seized motor. So they burn out, and then they come to a complete halt. We've seen it enough times to know this is real. And so uh, this is a class for deliverance. Everyone's doing deliverance, most of you. Um, you got desires to keep it going. Keep looking at yourself. You know, I don't believe in those cast out tapes, but I'm not against the cast out tape, but you know how many people go, I hate those tapes. I, well, dude, you, you thought the tape was gonna take you on a journey. I said, if you wanna know about a, a order and a micro valve pro I wouldn't have known all that stuff. Someone broke it down in a, in a tape, uh, witchcraft. I wouldn't have known I had any witchcraft in my family. I didn't know anybody was in witchcraft. No one did it openly, but somebody in the family line had been doing it. But the reality is, if you play those, it takes away your need to go through a journey with Jesus. Nobody had those tapes till 1965 when so RCA made that first recorder. So for 1965 years of humanity, they had to go by discerning of spirits. They had to go by godly counsel, growing in wisdom, and go on a journey. I feel you need to go on a journey. And everyone I see pops those tapes becomes robots. And robots always get offended with everybody else because we're doing it wrong. People who are doing it wrong normally have patience to someone that's running like a, a robot. They mostly have discerning, discernment. They mostly have timing. And knowing that these things have to happen before we can get that true change we're looking at. But they want that microwave. So I'm not discrediting any of it, but that's not your go-to. Your go-to is the Holy Ghost. Your, your go-to is the prayer closet. Your, your go-to is asking and receiving. That's, that's, that's what we're trying to do. And things will go fast. Once you shut down those negative thoughts, the wiles, you're not striking wiles at your body. 
The wiles are in your mind repetitively, negative thoughts, and you got to catch them. See, most people don't think it's the devil because it's a subtle thought. Oh, do you really need to go to the prayer group? Oh, you know, that person, this person, you know, you know, his, you know that guy was a ski smoke crack, you know. How much can a crack smoker, you know, smoking crack, you know, weird sounds they make smoking crack, buying crack, crack dealers. Can he really help you? I mean, he's always trying to whittle something down, but it makes sense. The controller is a masterful deceiver. The fortress of lies are just driving. Hey, give him the bird. Forget that person. Hey, you're dealt unjustly. Those are easy to pick up. As you whittle down, it's a subtle voice, but you can only catch them by the word of God. It's got to go through the filter. Your conscience is the word of God. It has to be able to filter and catch this stuff. Got time for one more question, and then we will go to prayer. If that's everybody's. Oh, okay, so I heard I listened to the guys from the come out and Jesus' name was but they were talking about like how, if you have a demon, how could you want to be casting out of demons? Like Say that again. If you're passionate about being a deliverance minister casting out demons, then you possibly couldn't have a demon, right? Because you're you're casting out demons and you wouldn't have a demon. That makes sense. So, in case you didn't hear that online, you can't cast out demons if you have some demons. No, you can. I cast out tons of demons and still had demons, okay. right? Yeah. Joe cast out tons of demons and he still had a few, right? So, at one level to the next, you, you can get them out by what? The name of Jesus. Yeah. Can, can, I make, can I make a Reinhardt bunkie? Uh, when I'm brand new, born again, barely know the Bible? Well, of course, if you bump into Reinhard Bunke when he was five and got saved and preached the gospel to him, you know, and he went through this process. So, yeah, you, 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 there's spirits in you. You will never get out until and they, they just lay low, right? They just pull back. The weed pulled back. It wasn't even telling me to smoke weed, think about weed, nothing for nine years. They got a long game. They are smart. But what was he doing? He's moving over my body, giving, eating, eating my joints, right? So I, I can tell you there's some spirits with, with, the, with that movie. I could point them to you. I'm not trying to nitpick it, right? Um, I'm not trying to nitpick it, but there's some things that I know are spiritually influenced, right? And they're all in a process. I mean, the guy, the guy that led the thing only been delivered for a year, right? I mean, come on, it takes a little while. So it's nobody's perfect, but they tapped into the authority. They tapped into the power. They love God. They were using the authority because they, he told them to do it. And they get all these wonderful fruits. And now they got to keep going along the process like every human, right? Peter, you think he didn't have demons? When Paul said, you're a straight hypocrite, that's a sign of dead people. Jesus said one of the signs of the Pharisees is you were hypocrites, and he comes up to him, this is years later, I forget if it's three or nine years later, he's got the chief apostleship to the Jews. He's got the, Paul's got the chief apostle to the Gentiles, and he says, hey, I watched you, man. When the Jews come from Jerusalem, you pull back from these Gentiles, and you're a hypocrite. Boom! You think that wasn't a spirit? Being a complete hypocrite, hypocritical to the gospel of Jesus Christ? He was still going through deliverance. That thing, had, that thing was affecting the whole body of Christ. I really just used the church and all that, and the Pharisees, but I'm talking about Acts. I'm talking about Peter. Oh, Peter. I'm talking about Peter was a hypocrite. Paul rebuked him to his face. Okay. You think you didn't have to get rid of some spirits of being a hypocrite? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Reinhard Bonnke could walk down after leading two million people to Jesus, and he could have walked on down to the slums and picked him up some, uh, you know, hooch, uh, some vodka and pounded it, right? You think he ain't going to pick up a spirit even though you led two million people to Jesus in, in one service, right? You're a slave to the one that you yield yourself unto. So you yield yourself to do their will. You do their will. They come in through that gate. Alcohol would be the gate of your mind and your mouth. Just piggyback on what he said. Can you explain real quick the difference with oppression? And possession then? Well, Christians can't be possessed. Possession means complete ownership. Oppression is we're, we're, we're controlled by the Holy Spirit. At any moment, he's ready, but the Holy Spirit moves on free will. The Holy Spirit works on free will participants. Demons work off slaves, right? Christina Aguilera can't keep 
shaking it like it's hot, right? She's going to shake it till she's hot, till she goes through full deliverance and salvation, right? But we can only be influenced. Could a Christian then be influenced to start dancing like her, right? Yeah, we could be influenced. And then could we pick up a spirit of dancing? I know a guy who was. He was 40, married a woman that was 60, and he was a boxer, so he had them sweet little dancing feet. And he'd go down to Tempe, and when the guys were afraid to dance, because the dancing doesn't come out till 10, 30, 11, when everyone's liquored up, he'd get out there and start dancing with the girls. And they're like, oh, we'll throw the old man a bone. We like to dance, and he's happy. Adultery. Adultery with a meth addict. Smoking meth. Minister. Right? So was he possessed with the same music he was listening to and the same person that set up that nightclub? No, but he fell under the influence of the Spirit. He fell into the oppression of the Spirit, but he wasn't possessed. I helped him get delivered and he went on and fulfilled his, his, his calling. Unfortunately, that ministry never came back, but he got another one, right? So there's a clear distinction. Christians can't be possessed, they're infected with demons. Infested and infect and, and infected. Go ahead, it's two ten. People are already leaving, man. We drove them out of here. Oh. You're helping me. <laughs> uh, you're fifty fifty on this. Okay. All right. Here's one really important. I'm curious about is uh, Isaiah Salar teaches like when he does deliverance, he finds the lead demon that's in the person, and then he binds all the demons in that lead demon and gets that lead demon out. Would that take all the demons out that way? Like, well, I worked with it. Well, okay. Um, so you're t saying he talks to him and 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 interrogates him, like I said, we don't do. A limited amount. He says just enough to find the lead demon and what their legal rights are, and that's about it. And he just wants to to find that lead demon to get. Then he binds them all in. Of course, in Jesus' name, binds them all in. Okay. Person getting that lead he's demon been here for. He's right. been no disrespect. I love the guy. I saw him when he was a little skinny guy bouncing around and didn't do deliverance. I said that guy's got the anointing. I told Mike and I told this other guy that this guy was going to do it ten years ago. He was up here in Mesa, and the one guy goes. He scoffed, like, no, nah, he ain't got the goods. I saw he had the goods, right? And he was going for it. He said something about deliverance one time, but it was just Holy Ghost trying to get people baptized. So I love the guy. God used him. Boom, went from party guy. Boom, you know, full-on evangelistic outreach, house overflow in the neighborhood, driving down the property values. Well, they probably went up because the favor of God was on the neighborhood. Probably blossomed, right? But he went from the outhouse to the penthouse, Boom, opened the door with all these preachers. They all got exposed. You know, went to 900 churches. So incredible hand of God on him to use him to do all those things. But if what he's saying worked, the churches he goes to would be a lot better off. Go visit them. It's called, it's called Fresh Start and it's called uh, Church on a Journey. Go drop by. And see if you see a powerhouse move of God when he's not there. And you'll go, whoa, maybe that system don't work. Sounded good, but we got to go through the process. If a person doesn't have understanding, he doesn't have the discerning of spirits, even though the controller was bound. Let's say it was bound. Let's say it did come out. He's so smart, he comes back in the parking lot. We've seen people lose their healings in the parking lot. We've seen Stephanie, who's a powerhouse minister on this team, pick up demons, according to her testimony, 30 minutes after she left. <laughs> Kelly and Mike had her just Coughing out like a dog. Another bag. Get another bag. All that. Boom. 30 minutes later. Why? Because people have free will and the devil's a masterful deceiver. So we have such a sin nature. You got to remember, we got a sin nature. We have to have the new nature of Christ. That takes time. We get the right spirit. Boom. Instantaneously. But the right... Heart is a process. Heart of stone, heart of flesh, give and take, surrendering it to him. And then when you're fully equipped, man, then you can stand in the day of evil, having done all to stand. Then you stand with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the feet shed with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. You think that all just goes, because strong man was bound and cast out? Remember, Adam and Eve picked up demons, having no demons on the inside. Okay? So it's a process. And by the fruits they produce, you'll know, right? It sounds good. I'm not against doing anything, but I would not bother talking to them, right? Right? I, I, wouldn't, I would not do that. I would not recommend that. I would tell him my person would to stop that, 
right? And I got some data on that. I got life experience on that, um, but I'm 100%. Those, I, I, I think the best way is on that movie is the Win Worley way, right? Win Worley, uh, just, hey, you renounce your sin, you confess your sin, you truly repent, and hey, we charge those demons, they'll come out, right? You speak to them by symptoms. You speak to them by what they're, they're doing to you. You got to whittle some down. Just because someone binds it doesn't mean it's just going to go. If you serve it and you, and, you, and you feed it, you got free will. Why would he have to be bound? Why would he have to go if you, if you feed him and you don't even know? Because you don't know it's a demon, right? Agreed, yeah. Well, I mean, his, his, his training is in the beginning, you give him around to all his sins and you go through Well, deliverance hey, go try it. See how it goes. Come back and let me know. I'm not against it. Just don't talk to him. Go ahead and try it. You know, we'll do it to you. We'll see if it works today. We'll bind the strong man, see if he comes out, right? Yours came out. You, you, you casting out demons, healing the sick, making disciples? Say again? Are you casting out demons, healing the sick, and making disciples of all nations? I'm working on it. Well, yeah. then maybe yours will come out today. The strong man, right? What's the strong I don't understand what that spirit is. <laughs> Symbolic of Satan. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the controller. How can you pillage a strong man's house? The demons consider the human body their house. How can you pillage the strong man's house? How can you kick the demon out? Right? Unless you first bind the strong man. Right? Then you can pillage his house. Then you can kick all the demons out. Right? So we're working on ourselves, Right? And then, you, and then it's not an intellectual thing. You won't be doing, I got to do it like Greg. I got to do it like Mike. I got to do it like Rick. I got to do it like Bill. Right? He'll show you. Just, it's simple. I barely talk to very few people. Very few words and demons will come out. Right? When they're ready. When they got a heart of gold, I've, I've helped a woman pound it on that door at 6.30 in the morning, ready to lose her mind. I'm losing my mind. I've been cursed. And I said, okay, hey, you're willing to repent for what those witches did to you? Yes, I will. Because if you don't, you get these tormentors. She forgave them and she just ripped out two buckets of demons. Very little was said. Because God already wants to help everybody. God already wants to save everyone. He already wants to heal them. He already wants to deliver them. We're working already with the God's will. So I don't need to be, you know, having hieroglyphics trying to figure that stuff out. It's the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It'll be right in front of your face. And what to do will be right there. Quick to help them. Joe, did you have something before we left? Your hand was up a few minutes back, and then we'll pray. Uh, no, I was just going to say that a perfect example of what you said was when you mentioned Derek Prince, who had been casting out the devil for decades, and he was in his 80s, and he had a spirit. And it was not, it was cast out by one of his little guys, little disciples. Wow. Yeah, repeating that, exactly right. He, Derek Prince tells a story. He was sick with cancer. I mean, he's, he's like, do I surrender my body? He was in his 80s. He had did a good job. He was the front runner. He was the Isaiah Saldivar to America uh, to kick the whole thing off. You know, I mean, he had favor like you can't believe. He was going into Catholic churches delivering everybody. I mean, that's that. Uh, he, said, he opened it up, right? God used him. At 80, one of his disciples that he had worked with, young guy, he said, can I come over and pray? And this is the words of a faith healer. Yeah, you can come over, but don't expect the instantaneous healing. I mean, that's the opposite of faith. He goes over there. The guy discerns it's spiritual and casts the demon out. Derek Prince said he screamed and the cancer all left. Wow. Wow. That's in his 80s. That's after 40, 50 years, 50 years almost of ministry, right? So... Uh, so the guy that uh, died to self, he went up that high, 21 days of fasting. And you know what? The devil told him praying in tongues was a different language that he was muttering. And the guy wrote that book, Your Power and the Holy Spirit, it's all about tongues opening doors. And that guy who trained with him for seven years went all the way up to die to self and he met the controller. And the controller said, praying in tongues isn't isn't real and he tried to argue with me with the guy he was discipling which was my buddy and i've discipled a little bit with him and i had to check him that that's a straight lie and he was trying to bring it down like it was just foreign languages which that was one level of tongues 
And so, you know, unfortunately, he had the favor of God to live a very successful life. <clears throat> Soon after he quit praying in tongues, his wife and him were divorced. And uh, me and one guy, he was, he was probably the fastest growing guy that had a strong anointing ever to come in this building. And uh, I pray for him almost every day because he tried to burn my house down and uh, his big burn spots whenever I walk over it because I figure that's some kind of satanic ritual. I pray for the guy and when I step on it because there's burn mark on my concrete. I got stained concrete floor, so it left a red. But I say, hey, that's a reminder. The devil meant it for harm. I'm going to use it for good and I'm going to pray for him every time. Well, I'm somebody, I'm somebody in the ministry here. Well, he was a guy coming through the system. We, you know, he was being discipled. He got to the point, and he was allowed to pray for people, kicked out demons, and uh, and then he went back to smoking, having sex with chicks first, left with a girl, and uh, they had some demonic plan that they were going to raise the dead and go follow some man from Costa Rica who was raising dead. And what's funny is I raised somebody from the dead with that guy's Narcan when I picked him up out of jail on. Camelback. So somebody was raised from the dead with what he left me. So, so the point is he wouldn't stop sinning because he thought of himself. The devil was seeing all his gifts and said, man, you are anointed. Dude, you're, you already surpassed Rick. Like Rick had to be working here for four months before he could do what you do. You did it in three services. And then he said, you'll be overriding Mike any time now. You, you'll be running this place. Well, then, hey, why can't I have sex with this girl? We'll go to Walmart, and they bought two rings for $9.99 and had their own ceremony so they wouldn't be living in fornication. That lasted two weeks, right? So what was it? It was the controller was still in there, right? He still had free will. He was using the authority, and he had a great anointing. So he, this guy led all kinds of people to Jesus. I mean, he had a gift. I went in, I used to do a McDonald's ministry. I'd get the McDoubles for a dollar. And I'd go around and say, hey, you need any food? And they'd get to eating stuff in their face. And once the sandwich got in their face and they couldn't say no, I said, hey, you need any prayer? And I would start working it. I come out with my McDoubles and some guy's going, man, what happened to me, man? He goes, you received the Holy Spirit. God doesn't just save you. He gives you the Holy Spirit. He goes, I can't believe this. I feel like... I feel like a million pounds lighter, some homeless young kid, 20 years old. Before I got out with the Mick Doubles, which was the tool to get the people to get him saved, he had already got the guy saved. And the devil said, I, he's got another way to work with someone like that. Let's build them up and tell them how good they are, how gifted they are, how talented they are, how special they must be to God because they can do at a level what hardly anybody can do. Right? And then, bloop. I think that's the problem, though. Of course that's a problem. <laughs> There's nothing that we can do. Is God working through us? There's nothing we can do. God working moves through people. Well, of course, when it comes to eternal life, divine healing, uh, casting out demons, but we got to put on our shoes. We got to go to the, get in the car. We got to go somewhere, right? We got to begin to use our mouth. So it's a great commission, God working with us and us sub submitting to God, right? So there is, you know, twofold, but the devil took him to the other way because it wasn't patience. So that's how you catch him whenever you're sinning. I sat him down. My wife, one time he was partying all night in Scottsdale and I was somewhere else. I said, can you pick him up? She said, hey, never have me pick that man up again. He is evil. There is evil on this man. My wife don't do, do, come in here and do deliverance. She, she, she works with kindergartners preaching life skills and right and wrong and still in their heart. But she knew through the discerning of spirit, he had picked up something evil. And I said, dude, what were you doing, man? He goes, man, I know something was on me. I was giving and buying these girls drinks. I was doing these things. And I said, man, I don't think that was you. I think, I think they, you got liquored up. You went into that realm. And so he didn't heed these warnings over and over again. And so the point I was getting to why I brought him up is I'm sitting over there at the building. It was a vacant building before I made it a house. And, uh, and I got up and I started preaching a message after I was here for four hours. And I mean, it's coming out and I'm telling about tongues and he's listening. The lights are out, it had no power in the place. It was only moonlight. I mean, this is a unique setting. And he goes, he goes, man, 
The devil told me that tongues weren't right and real. And every time I prayed in tongues, bad things started to happen with people, with situations. So I quit doing it. I said, he tricked you. And he began to release his tongues. And when he began to release his tongues, he went over on the side of the, the, the building and started hacking up spirits, hacking them up. That's the first thing the devil does when he attacks someone. First, he gets you not to be in submission to the body of Christ. I'm not above everybody. You can send me an email and told me I misquoted a verse. I need the correction. You, you, I, maybe I didn't lift somebody up high enough um, and bless them. Hey, I love all those guys. I love everybody that's working it out. It's not me against nobody. I'm in the body of Christ. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm over here at some building that holds holds 250 people. We get 50. We're looking for the next 200 to get here so we can fulfill our level of call. And so I'm not in battle with anybody. And so, hey, I'm not above correction. The first thing the devil does is get you without being accountability. Can he do it because you feel too defeated? He'll do it. Can he do it because you feel you're superior to somebody? He'll do it. But we need to be able to get counsel. We need to be pliable to the word of God. And someone who has experience why wouldn't I want to learn from someone with experience, right? Back in the day when we were lifting weights in high school, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. We did bench, incline, flies, decline. Dude, we were tearing our muscles down to nothing, and we'd do it again two times a week. It couldn't grow. It was overtaxed. I wanted someone to say, no, I'll do it once a week and eat some protein. I wanted the gains. So you learn from someone who's had the success. So they don't listen. They get away from the body of Christ, and then the devil will either tear them down or build them up. That's what happens when they get out of the counsel of somebody. You can't do that ever because you're going to face some stuff. As you go up, I only face a certain amount of spirits. But when I started casting out spirits, well, then I started facing spirits, right? And then I started helping people get healed. And now I'm facing something else that just wants to try to fire their darts. He wants to try to discourage me. He tries to discredit me. He tries to get other people. One of the things he used to use, like, oh, Mike's not here. I love Mike. I listen to Mike every day on the radio. And I'm like, dude, you don't do nothing. Why do you care if it's Mike or me? You need something because you do nothing. It was a dog and pony show. It happened all the time. So now if you say it, I kind of smile like, you're special. You're going to get a special touch today. I've been through this. I've overcame. I know what's in you. I can help you get it out. Right? But before I had the knowledge, he was working me. Right? And the working is always some sort of division, some sort of competition, some sort of someone else. Why are you, why are you looking down on me? Well, hey, I, I'm, I'm working hard. Why wouldn't you respect me for working hard? Why wouldn't you respect me for driving down here for 30 miles from Mesa? Why, you know, why, why, why? Making sense, sense, sense. No, it's a spiritual war. I'm here just to help somebody. I'm here to say, hey, what can I do to help somebody so they can get a breakthrough? And hey, they'll learn a little more. Someone else will come in. They'll learn a little bit more after that. And hey, they'll, they'll, they'll come on through. We've seen enough people to come on through to know that that's what we're fighting for, to see people come all the way through. And when you don't come all the way through because you'll meet a barrier of sin, which is the resistance, if you refuse to cut it off, then it will entangle you and sway you right back. So that's why Paul said, cut it off. That's what we're going to do right now. We can cut it off. There's another level as a minister that you need to look at. You came in here first and you could see things lined up, right? Bad attitude. You, you could see the guilt. You could see the shame. Uh, you could see the anger, right? And you knocked it down. So now we're, now we're here and we're saying, okay, if God's not a respecter of persons, and I'm called to bear fruit. Well, man, I want to make some, I want to make an impact. Okay. If God's not a respecter between us or Mike and Mike's able to be half asleep, 1.30 at night, decided to send an email. The guy's response, hey, I changed my life. I finally heeded your warning and I, and I went all the way through the miracle list. So something so simple can change a guy's life and direction. Now that's another deliverance minister over in, you know, North Carolina, right? Well, why can't we have some good, easy fruit like that? Well, we're facing the resistance, right? And we're facing the process of deliverance. And so we got to look at ourselves a little more closer. Yeah, we're not openly sinning anymore. We knocked that down. But now what is swaying us away from pressing on? What is what is chiseling away at our faith to expect big miracles, right? Well, hey, I learned that that call on Zoom really can't have more than 100. 
This is too many, right? Someone needs to rise up and have another one, right? So someone else is going to have to come and have another one after that. So the system is already in play for you to get, a, get in and get a piece. It's here. It's in this world. Now with these movies coming out, exposing the enemy, it's all across America. As all this turmoil and tribulation and, and the financial debacle that's about to go kaboom, yeah. there's going to be needy people. And God's trying to get you ready so that you can help them. But if you're over there, oh my goodness, my 401k, I worked all the way for my government to get this pension. It doesn't matter what comes at you and what gets stolen. There's a promise of God. What the enemy stole, he'll make him pay back sevenfold. There's, there's a promise of God. He makes a way where there is no way. One door gets shut. God opens a better door. That's the resistance level. Once you knock down your open sin, all of us here is this was a deliverance ministry class. People who want to learn more about it and do more and help people. We've knocked down the drugs. We've knocked down the porn. We knocked down just, just being angry at everybody. But now, hey, there's a resistance holding you back from the good fruits. And he's a, he's a doubter. He's a whisper. I'm telling you, that's the control. He's a whisper. You don't know if it's a thought. You don't know if it was your thought, just intellectual debating upon the possibilities of what you're about to do. No, he's the whisperer. And you can get him out. Some of you, you still need to repent because remember, nobody knows what goes on in the inside. No one, none of us know what you do in your house. God knows and the spirit world knows. It says whatever was done in secret will be proclaimed on the rooftops. He knows and he'll make it known. So we suffer the spiritual effects of what we listen to. That's how they're working you now. They're not having you watch porn. They're working you with your thoughts. And, and they, they'll size you up. Hey, you're not as... I mean, Isaiah Saldivar, I mean, he probably would have been an Anthony Robbins. You know, he's got talent. Uh, he, he, oh, I don't have talent like that. I'm not responsible for talent like that then. I got my one talent. You got your one. We got to be responsible for our one. Comparing ourselves with somebody else is a whisper from Satan. Discrediting yourself because you compared yourself to somebody else is step two with the enemy's attack on your mind. Because your life hasn't been getting better because you can't control who lives in your house because you're married to a spouse that's a knucklehead. Or your kids are wayward. That was 20 years in, in the working. And now you want it all fixed like this. Of course we do. And since you're not getting it, the enemy's whispering and saying, God really doesn't care. You're not going to get too much out of God. Look at your house. Oh, see, some things we got to be patient. Some things we got to persevere. Some things we got to keep speaking life and living life to see it happen, right? But he's whispering. That's how he's working subtly now that you've knocked down your outward manifestations. We're going to the second level of deliverance. Everybody like the, the guy from Alabama, he said, hey, I've overcome all this rejection and lust. I finally got it out. Now he's in the second level or third level. Getting your ministry going. Not having those negative thoughts. All right, let's pray. Remember, engage in prayers. You pray these prayers in your mind. These prayers are your prayers. Lord, we come with grateful hearts. Because you did everything for us. You did what we could never do. We are still, as born-again believers, recipients of great mercy and grace, walking in deliverance and divine healings. Lord, it's still the same. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. Our pleasure is to remain in you. Lord, I apologize when I let these things and these voices come between me and you. Uh, we are sons and daughters through the adoption, through Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. And so everything and every promise is yes and is amen. Please forgive me of my unbelief, Lord. Please forgive me for my impatience. Please forgive me of shrinking back and not pressing on. Forgive me, Lord, of not cutting off what was hindering me. Please forgive me, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. 
Lord, there's still some people that they're running, but there's some stuff, Lord, still through the wounds. There's still some sense of not being smart enough, not being anointed enough, not having those gifts. Lord, I pray that all those wounds that were inflicted through curses, through betrayals, through abandonment, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for removing those wounds. Thank you, you came to set at liberty those who were oppressed of the devil. Those wounds are oppressive. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I believe that every single person that's in here is called for good works. We got millions of people in the valley. I believe you want to help them all. Help them to get saved and healed and delivered. I believe these are the ones that you handpicked. And I think some of them don't believe that, Lord. I think they stumbled in here as somebody that just needed help for themselves so they could just go out and live a better life than before. Lord, I want them to be delivered from that liar. He's not letting them go. You didn't call them just to get delivered. You called them to be ambassadors with signs, wonders, and miracles following. That's the truth. I read it. I believe it. And I know it to be true through my own life. And Lord, the, that last enemy, he wants to be the controller. If we listen to him, he would be in control. But Lord, we surrender that you are in control. Your word is the truth. Complete freedom is always through the direction of your word being a lamp and a light to show us where we are, to lead us to where we're called to go. So Lord, I renounce any spirit controlling me through thoughts, through whispers, through arrows. I renounce this spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I want my mind to be fully clear. If there's any planks, if I've been blinded, if there's any planks, Lord, I, I want the plank to be removed. Lord, if I ran too fast looking to get a speck for a speck, Lord, I, I want to sit down today and take care of the plank. So I'll see more clearly with discerning of spirits and wisdom and your word bringing light so I can remove those specks out of other people. Yeah. Tonight, this afternoon, rather, I want to do business, Lord, with myself. Thank you that you take the nothings to nullify what is. You don't call people with talent. You give the people the gifts who come as they are. We're coming, Lord. I'm praying through this deliverance there will be an outpour of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to equip them with power. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're just sitting here patiently. Thank you, Lord. Just talk to Him. Lord, thank you for all the word, the experiences, the testimony. But Lord, now it's time, Lord, we ask you to move in this place. I'm asking you, like my brother was interested, let's, I want to bind any strong man that set this whole plan of destruction into these men and women's lives. The plan that they would pick up demons, that they would pick up rejection, that they would have a life of sin and the direction of the broad road. Lord, I pray that. And I thank you that you gave us authority over the strong man, that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. I bind the strong man of rejection. I bind the strong man of fear. I bind the strong man of poor self-worth. I bind the strong man of blame shifting. I bind hexes and vexes, voodoo and hoodoo and juju. I bind the Ouija boys in the astrology in Jesus' name. I bind Catholicism. Oh, I bind the gospel that was void of the power of the Holy Spirit through Catholicism. I bind idolatry and idols and praying to saints in the bloodline in Jesus' name. I bind the curses of murder in the name of Jesus, murdering others, murdering children in the womb. I bind these curses in Jesus' name. I bind the conjuring of demons and familiar spirits. I bind your power. I bind this mental illness spirit that came in to try to take people's minds. I bind your power right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the sexual person 
servant that came in to light these men up like Christmas trees when they look at naked bodies. I bind your power. I bind that spiritual pride that when the believers started operating in success spiritually, that they took off on their own accord with their own will in their own direction. I bind that spiritual pride in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I command you to let the saints of God go. I command this spiritual lazy spirit Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Spiritually lazy. I bind you right now. Spiritually unworthy. I bind spiritual unworthiness in Jesus' name. I bind spiritual timidity that would tell them not to charge boldly when God says go. I bind any spiritual insecurity, inferiority in the name of Jesus. I bind all carnal comparison with other people in the name of Jesus. All the sense of poor self-worth because they saw someone with something that they had not walked in yet. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of there. All that pain. Come out. All the pain from not thinking they're good enough Christians. All the pain from thinking they don't deserve it. In the name of Jesus, thank you for removing the pain in the soul. Thank you, Lord, for removing the pain. Oh, every woman the devil wants to inflict with pain. The pain of betrayal. The pain of letdown. The pain of self-comparison. I bind your power in the name of Jesus. I command you to let her go. All that torment in the mind of com competition. I command it to go. All the competition spirits in her mind. Comparing herself with herself when herself was doing better. Come out right now. That's all comparison. Come out right now. We're coming right now as we are. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Just take a big breath. We know. We already went through it. There's nothing more that needs to be said. Oh, okay. Sit down. We're going to pray. Lord, thank you. you. You healed this woman already. You healed her already. Lord, I pray for these healings of these kidneys right now. I pray healing of her inner man, Lord. Who she is, Lord, I pray healing upon her body. Lord, you called her to lay hands on the sick and they would recover. That qualifies herself laying hands on herself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come and heal her heart. You already healed her that time she had cancer, that tumor. Lord, thank you that you're healing all this. I bind all the infirmity spirits right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Pain in the leg. Come out. Pain in the leg. Come out. Pain in the bones. Come out. Degeneration of the body. Come out right now. There you go. You got him. Drive him out. Go. Go. Lord, thank you that you gave him a smart mind. It always helps. Lord, thank you that we're coming by faith now as children. Lord, I, you said, David rather said, search my heart, O oh Lord, to see if there's anything offensive in the heart. Well, this man did that. So I'm asking you, Lord, if there's anything unclean in this body, drive it out for your glory. I bind any spirit of religion. I bind any spirit of religion in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind any spirits that came to confuse this man. Confuse him. The Bible says we're to be doers of the word. Hearers and doers. If we didn't hear it and do it, we'd go into self-deception. If there's any self-deception that said more learning, come out right now. Come out right now. I bind your power. Take a nice big breath. Come out right now. Devils have blocked him emotionally. Devils have blocked him with word curses since he was a child. I bind your power in Jesus' name. Demons that are holding him back financially, I bind your power in Jesus' name. I command the guilt and the shame and the poor self-worth to come out. I command you to loose. I command you to loose. There you go. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit blocking her a gifting. There's gifts in there that she has no idea that are in there. I bind the devil that's blocked the gifts. I bind the devil that's blocking the operation of the Holy Spirit flowing fully in her life. And I command you to come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. You told her to look to somebody else to see if those gifts were available. No, she's got gifts nobody else has. I bind your power right now in the name of Jesus. I bind the destroyer that's been stealing from her bloodline for generations, stealing gifts, stealing the blessings, stealing the prosperity. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. He already confessed those sins. I command those sins that were done in secret. He already confessed them today, and I know he did because he told me before the service he was going to. I bind those spirits that came in. You try to get him to hide the confession. Well, he confessed. He confessed. I command you to come out right now. 
All those sins that were done in secret, I bind your power in Jesus' name. All those demons that went dormant for years trying to lie and hide yourself, I call you up and out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. The spirit of death that's on his body, I command you to come out. There he goes. Spirit of death, come out of there. Come out. Come out. It is not over. It is not over. The lies have tried to tell her it's over. It is not over. Her anointing's not over. Her gifting's not over. Her marriage is not over. You try to say it was over. I bind that demon right now in Jesus' name. Come on, begin to fight him. There he goes. You lied and said it was over. Come out. You told her that she couldn't minister if her husband wasn't doing it. Come out right now. You lied. We're all in different stages. Come out right now. You told her not to try till her husband was right. Come out right now. You're a liar. I know what you told her. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. I bind all these heartbreak spirits. Every spirit that attached itself to this woman of God when she was in her adolescence, when she was in her teens, when she was in her 20s, in her early 20s, I bind these spirits. I know you made a desire and a grab for her because of her natural and worldly talents. I command you to let her go right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. I know what you did. You grabbed those talents. You got her in the world. And you said you'll never operate with your spiritual gifts. You're a liar. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out. Feeling spiritually insignificant or inferior. You're a liar. Spirits of works that say you have to do so many things to be somebody. You're a liar. The works that Jesus said is required was to believe on the one in whom God has sent. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Guilt from past lifestyle. Guilt from past sins. Guilt from past relationships. Come out right now. Come out. You've been blocking her reading of the scriptures. I command you to come out. Come out. Blocking her from her study time, her prayer life. You come out right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out. You're going to come out. I bind the destroyer. I bind the destroyer right now in the name of Jesus. You're going to come out. Any lust spirit that came from a man that touched her body ever since she was a young girl, I command it out. I command it out. I command it to come out. Dominance that came through men that were operating in fleshly and worldly power and demonic power to bring her under control. Come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Come out. Just take two big coughs. He'll come out right from your belly. He'll start going. Get him out. I command you to go. I command you to go. I command you to go. Let's go, devil. You told her, not her. You're a liar. Come out. You told her there was no way. You come out right now. Come out of there right now. That fear of that she's not good enough before God. Come out. The blood of Jesus cleansed those sins. You come out right now. You've been blocking the blood of Jesus Christ. Come out. You've been blocking grace, and I command you to lose your hold. She does have the blood. She does have grace. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come all the way out from the root. I'm charging you in the name of Jesus. Come out from the root. 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 Hey, you ready to help this girl? Come out. It's rejection. You've been feeling like a million bucks, but that was the rejection stayed around. He's trying to tell you you're rejected in the spirit world. You're rejected spiritually. He moved over since the world told you of all your worldly talents and your beauty. He went dormant in there to destroy your Christian walk, your walk with Christ. Come out right now. My friend's going to help you. Keep going. Come out. Let's go. Keep charging them. Come out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of there. Stop stalling in that mind in Jesus' name. Stop stalling, you liar. Stop stalling. Stop stalling. All demons that attack the mind. Come out right now. Demons that stump his growth. Stunted him mentally. Stumped him physically. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Any new age spirits that brought her under subjection. Come out. Any devils that try to hijack her because of her childlike innocence and faith. Come out right now. Come out right now. I command you to come out of the mind. I command you to come out of the mind. Come out of the mind. I command you, lying voice, to come out of the mind. 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 Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there right now. Come out right now, that spirit of comparison. I command you to leave the women of God. The spirit of con comparison. Come out right now. Come out right now. Dissatisfaction with the way things are going in the process of God. Come out right now. Demonic dissatisfaction. Come out right now. Come out. 
take the poisons of bitterness, bitterness from the way things are going, bitterness from the way she was treated. I command those spirits to go. I command those spirits to go. I command them to leave in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. I command you to leave. Come out. Come out. Sunday. Hey, God bless, bro. Appreciate yeah, your yeah. great testimony. God, continue to bless you in your work. Appreciate it, man. Great, great ministry. I'm inspired. Hey, you're going to be doing it just like me. We just got a jump start on you. Keep it going. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I command them to leave. Come out. Oh, I want this. I command this spirit of heaviness in the brain. You're always clogging her mind with spiritual things. I break this spiritual haze in Jesus' name. I break this generational curse that said I was coming in to block all giftings, all spiritual anointings and prosperity. Well, we bind your power right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out right now. I break this generational curse to block the moving of the spirit in her life. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. I root you out. I root you out. The spirit of comparison. Come out right now. Come out right now. She comes as she is and walks with her Lord and Master Jesus Christ. You're a liar. Come out. Come out. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Lord, I pray if there's any confusion, Lord, between relationships in her life, Lord. We know that you know all things, Lord. And we can trust you with, the, with your word, with godly counsel, through the leading of the Spirit. If there's any demon in this woman of God's brain trying to block her. When you were talking about pornography, mm -hmm. um, I haven't watched porn in two years, but that's a third like confirmation that's come up that I, I felt so anxious. Like I, I have never got deliverance from it before. Oh. I didn't think I needed to. I didn't think I was still doing it. Oh, okay. Back there for All years. Right. Okay, well, let's pray. Well, Lord, thank you for the conviction. Thank you for the leading of the Holy Spirit to repentance. Thank you that she has a new life in Christ. The new calling, a new purpose, new hopes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the forgiveness of past sins, the sins that we were doing visually. Lord, we repent of it once again. We renounce it once again. And I know this enemy is trying to block her with her relationships, feeling the angst and anxiety to get married and to do it fast and to have all the things that she has in her heart, to have the children, to have the home. I bind this devil now. You moved over from porn to leading her astray, and I command you to come out of the mind. You're trying to block the moving of the Holy Spirit, guiding her life, going right back into the natural. You came in through the eye gaze to look at all the natural beauty of a man and a woman to light her up carnally so that when she needed a spiritual discernment and direction that you would block her. You're exposed. Come out. You're exposed. You're exposed. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. I'm gonna pray for you if you're watching online. Lord, I pray for everybody watching this video. Lord, I pray first for the ones who who seem it looks like it's crazy. Well, that's true. It's certainly an odd presentation here. But Lord, it's the truth. We need to be delivered, Lord. Somebody's nitpicking this. They're watching. But they stayed interested into this point because you wanted them on this call. You wanted them to receive deliverance. Lord, I'm praying that that spirit of the hypocrite that spirit of the fault finder and nitpicker, finger pointer. Oh, I bind that spirit in these believers in Jesus' name. You're a liar. You've been trying to discredit deliverance to this man and woman for years. I bind your power in the name of Jesus Christ. You've lied to them, even told them they'll do deliverance on their own terms, in their own will, in their own timing. You're a liar. I bind this liar in the mighty name of Jesus, the assassin to the moving of the spirit. I loose your holds by the authority of God. I command you to let these people of God go. 
Let the ministers of God go. Let the born again saints of God go. Satan, I bind your power. I pry your hands off by the word of God. Every lie is exposed. You got nothing to hold on to. You're a liar. We release the lies in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Take your lies and go in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. You're a liar, devil. You're a liar, devil. You're a liar. Let the saints of God go. I bind the spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. The spirit of sickness and disease. The spirit of migraine headaches. The spirits of diabetes and spirits of rejection. I bind the spirits of fear. I bind the spirits of depression and loneliness. I bind your power. I command you to take your hands off the people of God. Take your sickness and go. Take your confusion and go. Take your cancer and go. Take your arthritis and go. Loose. Just begin to speak to them, streamers. I've been speaking to them, and that'll take us a certain distance. But now you speak to them. Take your hands off me and go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take your hands off my mind and go. In the name of Jesus. The only begotten Son of God. Go, take your hands off that woman's mind. In the name of Jesus. Take all your generational curses and go. Take all those generational curses of sexual sin and go. Take all that mental manipulation and go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take it and go, Satan. Loose and untie. Loose and untie. Hey, Joe, let's double team this guy real fast. <laughs> okay. Put your hands on his shoulder. I'll take one shoulder. Okay, sir, here's the, here's the time you've been waiting for now. Lord, you're the God of all miracles and the God of all truth. Lord, I pray through the truth of your word that your miracle working power would come forth and deliver this man. He came in through all that sexual sin and perversion. He came in through all that sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And he has froze this mind's brain, this man's brain and mind. Lord, I'm praying for mercy to come forth. He's heard about deliverance now a hundred times. Lord, he's now confessing sin. He's now confessing it. He's now desperate. He's now in a desperate situation and has a desperate need, and he's asking you for help, Lord. Help this man in this situation, Lord. Let him have his mind back. Let him have his marriage back, Lord. That devil wants this divorce because his wife is the one that prays with clarity. But his wife gets, keeps getting infected because of this spirit that's in his head. Lord Jesus, I pray and I thank you for the mercy that says yes. You said yes to deliverance. Satan, I bind your power and I command you to come out. I bind this sexual sin demon which has haunted him for years, that was buried for years, that trying to divorce, cause a divorce, and trying to cause him to believe that he gets what he gets and deserves what he deserves. You're a liar, devil. You're blocking mercy and grace. You're, you're, you're blocking the blood of Jesus, the finished work of Christ on the cross. You're a liar. I command you to let the truth, the truth will set him at liberty. You're lying. I command you to come out. Take two big coughs. You got to start using your faith here. Come out. Drive him out. Come out. Fight him. You're the one giving me emphysema. You're the one giving me these tremors. You're the one giving me this pain in my mind. You're the one clogging my mind. You're the one trying to kill me. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for patience for my sister. Patience with her husband's salvation. She told me this afternoon that her husband will be saved. I believe that not only will he be saved, but he will do what born-again people do. They'll be ministers. They'll be servants. They'll be greater husbands. I pray a blessing, Lord, on her life as she lives the life. Thank you, Lord. As she lives the life that's pleasing to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that anointing is on her life, that she will see the desires of her heart, Lord, in your timing. Thank you that she doesn't stop loving. Thank you that she doesn't stop forgiving. Thank you that she doesn't stop serving. Thank you that she doesn't stop keeping on serving people that she doesn't know, as well as her husband. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for these promises. And thank you for the good fruits that are going to happen in Jesus' name. Thank you for her friends. Thank you for those friends that she has. 
Thank you. You gave, you gave her four good friends that I know about that all love you and love her. Thank you for that bond of unity between these sisters. Though no one's perfect, though no one does everything perfect, that there is mercy and grace and forgiveness always between these women of God. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come out. Night terror. Night terror. Terror in the soul. Terrorizers. Terrorizers. What are you going to say? You know how you were explaining your... Like your childhood stuff uh -huh. was like not really easy to learn stop. or hard to learn. Yeah. That's what I've stop. always felt with since I was little. Like I got held back in second grade. Yeah. You know, when you're reading and understanding what I'm reading. Okay. Like I noticed that with the Bible. Like it, 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 was, it was literally through every book in school. It's, it's, it go, it's, like, it's worse. It's worse than it's not. It's worse than it's not. Okay. Excellent. I know how to pray for that. Lord, thank you for this woman of God. Thank you that you called her out of the darkness into the light. And thank you that she has the mind of Christ. She has that right spirit. Lord, I thank you that you break this curse of learning disability that came down through the bloodline. I bind learning disability right now. I bind the devil that blocks reading comprehension in the name of Jesus. I bind the devil that blocks the word of God from going forth into her mind and into her spirit man and into action. I bind your power. Come out. Come out. Come out. Learning disability, I bind you. The generational curse of brain damage, I command you to come out. Any type of brain damage, come out right now. Any type of spirit that came in to steal intellect and intelligence and discernment, come out right now. I bind your power. Come out of there right now. Come all the way out. Come out of the mind. Come out of the prefrontal cortex, the memory cortex. Come out of there right now. Come out of the lobes and the ponds. Come out right now. The hippocampus, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the amygdala. at all. I command you to come out. I command you to come out of the brain. I command you to come out of the brain. Come out of the brain. Come out of the intellect and intelligence. You're blocking the gifts. You're blocking your gifts from learning the word of God, studying the word of God. I command you to take those poisons and come out right now. Keep going. You got them now. God bless you, streamers. <laughs> Signing off. Keep fighting. Come out, learning disability. Learning disability, I command you to go.